get right with God oh, well, and I do it now. Oh, you just get right with God oh, yes, and I he will, will show you, you how. Well, you Kneel me? down at the cross oh, well, where Jesus, Jesus shed his blood. Well, you get right with God. Get right, get right with God. Get right with God, oh, well, get right with God. Well, and do it now. Oh, get right with God oh, well, and he will show you how. Oh, I'll cut that a bit short. <laughs> Heck yeah, I like that. Yeah, I'm not sure what year that is. And if I try to search for it again, I can't really find it again. It's one of those things I like found and recorded. It. It's talking about God will show you how, Jesus show you how, get right with God, he'll show you how. A hey, pretty simple song. <laughs> well, very true. That's the thing, like, I've, I've heard lots of different hymns, uh, you know, since my uh, plunging into Christianity. And usually all of the hymns, like, you know, there's lots of them with, for many different reasons, but the, the gospel ones, the ones that talk about the, the blood of Christ, those are the ones that struck me as, when I wasn't a Christian, they struck me as the oddest. Mm -hmm. Now that I am a Christian, it struck me as the most like poignant and powerful. <laughs> yeah, the more you know about God's word, uh, the simpler the truth is. Oh, hey, Praise I Am is having a OSAS debate review. Oh, boy. OSAS debate. I, I don't know. How can you have security in Jesus? Them. Yeah, but let me ask you this. I, I, this is my only question about people. You know, people are bit, who's winning? Who's winning the game? You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter who's winning. <laughs> Hey, so usually on like the video games that I would play, it, the the question "Who's winning?" is so absurd, but it still yeah. is like people truth, still I, ask it. That's so funny. <laughs> truth wins every and time. You can just be like, "Uh, the game's winning. <laughs> the develop yeah. the developers and their wallets are winning." <laughs> well, who's more persuasive? The truth. Who brought up better points? The truth. I'm gonna put a put a thing, put a uh, link. But um, so yeah, I, even though I was rattling on about Theophilus earlier, I mean, I, I'm not necessarily married to, uh, you know, to listening to this or talking about him or whatever. Theophilus, I'm been calling him Theophilus. Oh yeah, I. I, I I skip back and forth. <laughs> Which it's what's like Augustine and Augustine? Oh, you know, like I, I'm from, I'm a Baltimore, Baltimore, Baltimorean. Oh yeah, that's I my. Know, I know my, all about you, Baltimoreans. I spent yeah. a lot of time up there. <laughs> so Augustine is that's that's just that's the dialect. Right on. 
Theophilus. Yeah, I think I do actually pronounce it in this Theophilus. Although I probably pronounce it in different ways, like because I'm all, I'm all over the place. <laughs> I'm going to put the. Yeah, what's cool about this is because uh, th this is the same time Irenaeus was uh, Bishop of of uh, Lyon in France. This dude was Bishop of, um, you know, Antioch. Obviously, you know, 70 so or so years after Ignatius, uh, you know, was that is martyrdom. Mm. And what this is like, and uh, so Polycarp's martyrdom when he died was, uh, hey, what's up, Kevin? Hey, Kevin, good to see you, you and Shane. Polycarp was in 155. Oh, I decided I'm going to do, I'm going to try to finish. I'm going to try to do the Apology of Justin Martyr before the weekend's over. Um, which is, which happens around the same time. That they actually think that it might be in response to the martyrdom of Polycarp, some people think, because mm. he makes reference to people being burned. But uh, I started doing it today, but it was like rush hour outside. So every time I'd start talking, like cars would start driving by and I'd get, get irritated. And I'd be like, all right, I should just this later <laughs> well you know back to that thing about debating Olsas I don't know how you can who's winning wait a minute well <laughs> I know but I don't know how you can claim that you believe in Jesus and the promise and not hold to once he saves you you're always saved I don't I don't know how you can do I don't know how you can be like outside of that Let's say that again. Believe in Jesus that you are not like become unsaved. Well, well, no, I don't know how you can have eternal security in Jesus, right? Believe the promise that God gives in Him. Eternal life, he, he cleanses you of all sin. You're made righteous before God. How can you not hold to once He saves you, you're always saved? How, how is that even possible? to say that you believe in Jesus well, and, and say that there's a contradiction in that. Look, I'm sure, and here's why the who's winning question is so hilarious, because I'm sure that if you look at whatever this review is of it, <clears throat> it's going to be scholars who have, who have biblical evidence on their side. Mm -hmm. um, who are going to, Pit scripture against scripture, you know, iron against iron. Okay, it's always. But ultimately, <clears throat> and uh, when I sort of look at the uh, <laughs> the meta, as the kids say these days, right? Mm. Uh, <clears throat> I have to 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 conclude that what's happening here is is like God knew that this was going to happen. People are going to argue about these things mm -hmm. at each other's throats. Like it's not that God. It's well, otherwise you'd have to say is confusion. Mm -hmm. And when we come into it, people have confusion. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Shalom. What's going on, Paul? What's up, brother? Kevin? How are you? I'm chilling, you know, getting ready to leave work. Last few minutes here. It's a quiet night right now. Man, I yeah, I just to ask you. I, yeah, what's up? How did that go with your pastor and the church and everything? How's that going for you? Oh, that was great, man. He was um, asking me if I'd like to have uh, ministry opportunities to serve at the church and stuff. And I said, yeah, that'd be great. Oh, well, that's, that's so good, Kevin, man. I've been praying for you, buddy. I, I'm, I'm just so glad that you're finding something good like this. Yeah, and it's cool. The pastor has the same name as me. His name is Kevin too. So <laughs> um, right. we talked for about an hour on uh, Monday morning, and um, we were just going over different doctrinal issues, and we seemed to agree pretty much. And uh, yeah, he seems legit. You know, like he's sincere, and he was telling me about how the church has ministered, uh, uh, missionaries sent out 
in different parts of the world, Africa, and uh, they even had a mission, a couple of missionaries over in uh, Ukraine. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I was, it was just good. I, I mean, I've been enjoying the worship music and stuff, and um, seems like a really friendly church. So yeah, I think I'm gonna keep going there and um, probably be a member, you know, and then probably serve locally there at some capacity. Look, if you find, I'll tell you this, Kevin. It, it took me a long time to find this, but if you find a pastor that's like the true biblical definition of a pastor that's selfless, uh, you know what I mean? Just uh, he, he don't believe in arguing and fighting with people. He believes in teaching by example. Um, I, I, I've ran into a pastor like this, you know, here the last, I think, four or five years of my life I've had this pastor. And I, I, I got out. I wanted to go knocking on doors. You know, we went witnessing and all this stuff. And man, this guy is just genuine. You know, he's been doing it like 30, 30 some, or maybe more than 30 years, starting churches and then staying for a while, go starting another one. And, but he, he said he plans on staying at this one. He believes that God brought him to him. And he come into a church where it used to be old, independent, fundamental Baptist, you know, like almost to a point of legalism, you know, not much of a Holy Spirit, <coughs> but a zeal for God and very, strict you know and rightfully so in, in many aspects um but that's you know they can go too far with all that um but anyway he come into this church and he just started he started bringing in this children ministry then he started going to these people that were handicapped like um like mental disorders and stuff he started bringing them into church he started taking people in he'd give his vehicles to people he knew like the whole county within like three years knew him and he knew people better than I knew, and I lived there most of my life, you know. Just a genuine guy, man. So if you can find a pastor that's, you know, that kind of pastor, you're going to be blessed, man. Get in there and get with them, you know, learn from them. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and I just want to say on the, on the topic of eternal security that um, the Jesus that the uh, conditionalists present is a liar that doesn't keep his um, promises that he makes in scripture. And they, they twist his word to make, to make him contradict himself. When you have entire chapters of the Bible, especially the book of John, I love the book of John, John six, John 10, John five, these, these chapters hammer home on he'll never lose any that have been given to him by the father. Um, but conditionalists want to say, but yes, you can't, he can lose you, and it's up to you to keep yourself when the Bible says the opposite. And so they make, they make God a liar, um, which is why I tend to say in most circumstances, uh, conditionalism is a false gospel. Oh, yeah. It's tricky, isn't it? Like, it seems like they get uh, the the inauguration of coming into salvation and there shouldn't even be such a thing, but the way that they, it breaks down for them, there has to be. Um, it seems like they're, they're in touch with the scripture on that. But then once you're given this salvation, it's like you lose base from all that's been given you. You know, it's like, um, it isn't greater as is he that is in me than he that is in the world. They don't have that kind of faith. I believe this. If you believe you can walk away from God after he's already sealed you. I would have to side with some Calvinists on this. Like, who do you think you are? You know, we're talking well, about God. <laughs> if, like, look, man, if you can unseal the Holy Spirit that, well, you know, and I've said this a million times and people are probably here sick of me hearing me say, oh, there goes Kevin again with that. But that, but you're saying that you're stronger than God. Like if you're able to break the Holy Spirit, um, that is an infinite, all powerful, all knowing <laughs> being like the, the, there is no way that you could ever outmatch, out strengthen, outsmart, outwit or anything. The Holy Spirit. All right, and like you say, Kevin, that's a good point you made earlier. They're also saying that they have such a will and such a power that they make what God said of no concern. It's, it's, it's not true. Exactly. Yeah. They make they make um they make the word of God contradict itself. Because what they do is they take warning passages out of context 
and ignore what it's actually warning about and try to apply it to believers that this is a warning you can lose your salvation. If you read each warning in context and you do some study on it, there doesn't exist a single warning in the Bible that warns you're going to lose your salvation. It's most, warning other things. Yeah, most warnings I've seen is when they're directing the comments to Hebrews are talking about the circumcision to some degree. Um, about, uh, like even in Jude, I really do think when it says that you turn... God's grace and lasciviousness. I think it's talking about those that are truly denying Jesus as the Lord. Um, you got it. The, yeah, the, and it literally means license to sin, lasciviousness. It means it's using using the the grace of God, using God as a um, means to just live however you want. And that's exactly what these hyper free grace people do. Yeah, but you know as well as I do that. I know there's people that, you know, that will take advantage of that way. I don't want to say that, but in Jude, for me, if you keep following the, the passages and, you know, the verses in that, it talks about uh, the angels losing their first inhabitation, right? And, yep. and then, then it talks about them that uh, um, despise the law of Moses, I think, or something of that nature. And, but anyway, what it's talking about is, and then it goes twice plucked. And if you think about Israel, God chose Israel first, right? And then when Christ came to him, uh, there was many that, that during that time that denied Jesus as being the Son of God, the Messiah, the Lord. So these were people that were twice plucked, or, and what does it say? Something twice plucked and picked up or something like that. I shouldn't even try to say it if I don't remember it. But what, yeah. twice, twice dead, plucked by the root or something? Yeah, and... And that's because they they lost their they come out of their first inhabitation. They were to continue in that. They've been given prophecy to continue in that. You know that whenever the Messiah comes and Jesus fulfilled all those prophecies, right in front of their eyes, did miracles in front of them. You know, um, and I, I do believe that in a lot of passages it's talking about people that are continuing in that same practice. Uh, Paul, you know that. Um... People try to use this passage about them being twice dead and plucked up by the root to support this reprobate doctrine where there exists a group of people that can't be saved. Uh, reprobates can be saved if they ever believe. You know, that's, yeah, I know. that's, what, I, that's yeah. what I say, too. But they say, no, no, that means they can't be saved. Oh, I've seen too many reprobates get saved, man. It's just not true. How do you how do you even uh, go if to it's an saying that and it's saying nothing, isn't it? Mm hmm. <laughs> I think it's talking about Israel, man. I mean, oh, geez. That, you know what a reprobate means is somebody who's not being saved. So if somebody's going to believe, then they're not, they're no longer a reprobate. It's a, uh, these things are just word games to, to usher in confusion. That's all it is. See, there, there was an, Jesus had an expectation of Israel for one that he only, he only came to Israel, right? And he come to them in the expectation that they would know that he was fulfilling the prophecy of the Messiah. And they were just straight up lying, saying that he wasn't, you know. So it, when, there's no way I can look at this other than this is talking to Hebrew non-believers, you know, people that denied Jesus Christ. Because if you go up a few verses from this, it, it's when it, when it talks about turning God's grace and lasciviousness, I think that what he's saying there is that they, they, spy, they despise the spirit of grace. Uh, I think it was made known in Hebrews that we're well, talking about or, Ro or Romans, yeah, actually Romans. Yeah, said well, guys, I know about, but I can rejoin you in about fifteen to twenty minutes if you're still going. All right, all yeah. right, I'll be back in a bit. Okay. I would like to get in the Book of Jude one day because I, I want to be proven wrong if I'm wrong, and I would definitely like to hear other people's insight on this. I've heard some things where people think it's talking about antinomianism. And I've learned enough in the Bible to understand that it, one truth can apply to many things, right? It doesn't, as long as it remains in the truth in the context it's in, it still can be, it can apply to things, you know, more than one. But I do believe specifically this is talking about people, uh, the more you read the context, it's talking about a certain type of people. Somebody that had a covenant with God prior is what I believe. That's that's like the angels had an inhabitation prior. They already had that covenant with God. 
Yeah, uh, I, I actually read this on what, what, read this once spontaneously. Yeah, because your view your view is that this is talking specifically about Judaizers. Well, listen to the beginning of this verse. For there are certain men crept in and unawares. How many times does Paul say that when he's talking about the circumcision? Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation? That's not talking about just anybody. That's talking about specifically a certain. And the more you read into it, you know, he's whoever this is, he's talking about the circumcision. The, the ones that denied Jesus as Lord. It could be both. I mean, there could be specifically Jews. I'm not who, saying that. See, this is my thing. When I argue against this, I, I don't want to come against the idea that, you know, antinomianism is bad, uh, like like it's good or something. Yeah, not, well, we don't want to beat each other's throats over who Jude, Jude is talking about. That would. That but would I do think in the context, the poster, though. Poster uh, for, for, for missing the entire spirit behind yeah. the words. You can go to Romans 3 for <laughs> antinomianism. You know, go to Romans 3. It's specifically calling out antinomianism. But not right here. Right here is not it's got nothing to do with, with antinomianism. Yeah, this has to do Paul, in, in the context that Paul uses, isn't all of it antinomian? Because if if he is describing, you know, the law as sort of as an example uh, as as far as something that people should be doing and which are not doing, and because they don't do it. They are under sin. Right. Um, therefore, any sin in this regard is going to be described or can can therefore technically be described as a form of antinomianism. Oh, Ethan's here. Hey, Ethan. Good to see you, buddy. You said Romans. Three. On belief. Yeah, it's always been about belief and unbelief. That's where the judgment comes, but. I can't get no one to listen to that on the reform side. <laughs> it's really that simple, well, man. It's, it's like I we have these long was, conversations. Sometimes somebody, uh, well, I told you I was just listening to somebody talking about how Paul is a false teacher, like, like very ardently. And then they claim, and I knew that this person Long ago, I had heard saw them say the early church fathers. None of them talked about Paul, and I'm like, what? <laughs> like, well, yeah, that wasn't until the, uh, you know, the Roman, the Roman Catholic. And I'm just like, that's just straight up. Wrong. Like, what are you doing here? Somebody just say something just straight up incorrect. Not even twisting words. Not even mental gymnastics. They're just saying stuff that's just straight up wrong. And then you show them that they're wrong. Well, if and then later on, they ignored that you showed them, and then they keep saying the same thing. That's a liar, right? Yeah. <laughs> Paul starts this out like, if our unrighteous, you know, for what if some, let me go back up to three, for what if some do not believe, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Is that, so, Paul's is made, so, so Paul's really digging into belief and unbelief, right? Uh, so, showing God's going to be true regardless of what how people take this. Because people were accusing Paul of being an antinomian. Uh, it says, God forbid, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest well, overcome when thou art judged. He's saying that. Antinomian, I gotta be, antinomian <laughs> wasn't invented in like the, the 19th century. You know that, right? Like that term. Matter of fact, you know what? I, I, don't, I don't know for sure. I'm going to look it up right now. Yeah, but what we look at is antinomian. I'm not going by the labels. Of what people every, say. We, we create words which to batter each other with right um, yeah i know these are these are tools of satan and i know a certain a certain doctrine that is a master at doing that you say jesus <laughs> told us to believe they say but this uh, you, <laughs> you say jesus said to believe god said to believe that's what we're going to be judged on and they say well, why do some right, not, why, why do some not, not believe? It was coined by Martin Luther yeah. during the Reformation to criticize, according to Wikipedia. I'm just looking at Wikipedia here. According to Wikipedia. So, you know what? I'm not even going to, because you can, I'm sure, if they, like, like, the critics, because if you look at the etymology of it, like, did he literally use that word or did it mean the same thing? People can twist all kinds of things. Not that right. I'm any fan of Martin Luther. 
Yeah. I was just watching this thing where you know, the Spanish invaded Rome in like the 16th century and like sacked the city and like just slaughtered it. Like somebody wrote like, oh, the the Vandals and the Goths and the the Turks like like they were all put to shame by how bad these these so-called fellow Christians did to this city. Right. <laughs> and um and, and one thing struck me because there was there was a particular particular band um, of Landschnecks, uh, that were Lutherans and they had like taken vows to God to, to kill every priest and, and like, and like, and, and slaughter like every, uh, like, like Cardinal and Bishop. They felt like, what do you think of these people, Paul? You think these are, you think these people had the Holy spirit in them? Well, they're not operating out of it if they do. That's for uh, sure. Like, that, that's for sure. <laughs> like these, this is these these were these were i don't think this stuff was made up like you know these uh these tales of what people are doing and it's like it might have been a while ago when i would say it went i can't even imagine people like christians a whole group of christians just you know just saying that that they they're they're justified in and slaying people just because they're what catholics you know and then it's like nowadays I can see how people can get so wrapped up in ideology mm -hmm. that they they literally do begin to dehuman. Well, it, dehumanization isn't even the right word. Um, there's a, there's a type of of of, of internal self imposed cosmic righteousness that people take upon themselves. And once you have that, that, that you feel just cosmically justified in what you're doing or what you're saying, and you'll do and say anything. Right. And if, and if you don't have the spirit of Christ curtailing that or chopping that demonic nonsense off at the root, um, you're in trouble. And the whole world's in trouble right now. Yeah. Although, praise the Lord, because he's, he's the Lord. That seed that's been cast on the wayside. Um, yeah, the devil come in and stole the seed and they, they were deceived. Um, but this is what I want to say about Paul in Romans 3 is that he, he's... Uh, he's making his case that what he's being accused of by teaching the truth. And this is what I've learned, Kelly, like you said. It's the opposition that comes against and don't just accept the pure word that's being given. You know, they, they, but what if this and what if that and, but why this? And well, how about oh, just God. simply, how about just simply listen to what, what the Lord's saying, take it in and trust him. You know, just, just like with the Holy Spirit, when I looked up what grieve the Holy Spirit means, that means to resist the Holy Spirit. And, what I've learned in the Bible is that the Lord said that it's good that he sends the Holy Spirit. And, and I don't think, like Kelly was saying the other night, I don't think the Holy Spirit's given enough attention um, in how he works in our in our hearts and minds. And uh, That's because he's so silent. That's funny you just said that, though, because the, 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 the Theophilus thing, it's in three books. The ending of the first book, he says, this is my God, and I, I, I urge you to, to honor him and trust him. And like, so the way you just said, trust him, like, I mean, just like that. <laughs> yeah. Shane's making a good point. The, the judgment and, and the Lord even said, this is the judgment that men love, uh, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. But if you come to find out who he was talking to, remember he's coming to Israel. He was talking to people that would not come to Jesus after he was fulfilling the prophecy. See, they had, there was something that Jesus looked at with Israel with more expectation. Like even when he referred to what Tyres and uh, what was it? Sodom. And I, I don't know. It was, it was, I think it was Tyres and I, I can't remember the other. I'm trying to remember the uh, name of that. Uh, Shrezen or something. Shrezen. Cor Corazin. Cor Corazin. Yeah. And, um, uh, anyway, he was, he was rebuking this. He was rebuking Corazin. Oh, you. Yeah, because Tyrese and Sodom, he said, if they would have had the miracles done that you've seen, and you know, basically, we were looking at the ruins of that place not long ago on yeah, the Earth. Yeah, yeah, but but his point was this, and the message, you know, the context of the message was, you know, too much is given, much is expected. The Lord said that, and from what all they had been given, He expected them 
to recognize, you know, who he was and they were denying him. And so when, when you get into John three, you see that the, the, the one that loved darkness rather than light were the ones that were not coming to Christ. And he had that expectation that they should. Um, and so he didn't even allow on some of them, he, he wouldn't even allow the glorious light of the gospel to shine upon them unless they be converted. Cause that's how powerful the gospel is that, once you uh, receive it in the truth that God gives it, it's true and you will be converted because God said it and that's how it is. Um, but when you get in here with Paul on Romans 3, talking about Ananias, he was accused of this by teaching the truth. And this is kind of, this is kind of like the sediment that he's having. Um, oh, wait a minute. We went to John. Okay. Oh, what? Uh. <laughs> Romans 3. Romans 3. yeah right in here right in here it says um go up to like six i think i think that's where we were at I but if our yeah but if our unrighteousness committed that the, Paul is specifically talking about a certain group of people well he's talking about what he's being accused of here in romans is this romans three yeah, yeah. i think so yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but if I, you know, he's going on that uh, that thou might be justified in thy sayings and might overcome when thou art judged by believing, you know, professing and believing in Christ. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. He says, God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? Because it's based on belief and unbelief and then he goes down here to like seven and eight if you don't mind going down just a little bit for if the truth of god hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory why yet am i also judged as a sinner and not rather as we be slanderously reported as some affirm that we say let us do evil that good may come there's the antinomian right there he's been slanderously reported and affirmed that he said that whose damnation is just what then are we better than they No, and no wise for we have both proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin and as written there is none righteous no not one and I found this he's even saying that the antinomium can be saved right but he's not he's not condoning the practice of saying hey let's do evil so that God will forgive us you know and and I know that that's kind of a twist on what we say Antinomius is today, but it's basically the same principle. Well, if you're denying, if you think about this, and I know you do, especially in the book of Romans, where we just went through it, the entirety of what was done by Christ undoing, in a way, the entirety of what was done by Adam. Um, so it's... It, this is why I'm just I, I go on to no matter what their their uh, their disconnect is if there's a disconnect between themselves and 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 the righteousness of Christ that that's been given to them or that's been attempted to be given to them or not you know whatever you write that it's been offered unto them mm -hmm. that particular disconnect is the problem and so all these different tendril I, I kind of see because if you if you're looking at it like like because I could even agree with you that Paul, in this particular like context, and who he was thinking of in his mind when he was dictating this letter, um, mm. like he, he it's, it, I think it's like it's possible that he was talking about those those people, those types of people. But as far as it's it's, if you would agree that you could attribute it to various groups. But this is the idea of this is why Paul's writings are so are so. I, th I think in this this sentiment, though, different elements within something without it necessarily applying around something. You know, you know, you know. Who, who would slanderously yeah. report? Well, why Paul are they way? evil? Are they evil because they're Jewish? Uh, no, 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 no. Evil because they're they're rejecting Christ. The same reason no. that the antinomians are evil. The same reason yeah. that. Um, you know, any other pagan is evil. it's not they're not evil for the sake of being their selves. They're evil because and just like we just had it up John 318, mm -hmm. you know, they're evil for it. They're condemned for their rejecting the son. 
and especially since then. So, I mean, I mean, you're right in the regard that they're the ones that that he came from. Well, he's they're the ones that he came to. And who else would slanderously <laughs> report this about Paul? Who else would slanderously report this about Paul other than somebody that it's looking from a perception of how they see the covenant with God, you know, in their eyes. And so to say that it's given the gospel to them, they could take it. I, I, I could just hear them because I hear it all the time. Oh, you're just saying, let us do evil that good may come. We're just secure in Christ. Yeah, We're already right. saved. Yeah. yeah. That's so hilarious. That the same, I, I don't know what, this is why, I mean, I suppose that's one thing to respect the people that, uh, that deny Paul about is their, their consistent, um, when they deny the spirit of the gospel, you know, because then cause now you can't point to, to scripture and look at Paul to who right. describes these things to the Gentiles, um, you know, which just belies the, that's something that, like, because Paul coming to the Gentiles and just explaining it in the way that he does, it's just, just like he says, the, the, the Jews, um, you know, they're going to believe via other channels in a way. The, the Greeks, what is it? The, Greek, the Greeks demand a sign or the Jews demand a, a, what is it? But they each are demanding something different. Um, yeah, the Greeks want wisdom and the Jews want a, a sign. Yeah, a sign. Yeah. And and it makes sense why they would if they're already oh. now imagine this someone that believes they're already in covenant with God Take through care. through legitimate reasons right that's been handed down through tradition of men um that had covenant that had a covenant with God and they're in that same gener you know that the same lineage um being passed down this throughout generation to generation to generation um yeah, that they would be judging the one that's coming in with this new covenant, you know, rightfully so, I guess, you know, from yeah. all that they know. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, but yeah, it is, it is that they're wicked. I agree with you and Ethan. I, I, I didn't mean to infer that it has nothing to do with just being wicked, but I believe that Jesus came to save sinners. So, and that sentiment, I have a problem just thinking that it's somebody that is wicked and sinful. I think it would be more along the lines of not believing God, you know, or not putting their hope in Christ. And in this case, what's expected of people that should have known better that were denying the Lord after he proven himself and come to them personally. Amen. That's why Paul is so dangerous when it comes because he explains it so clearly. And people can deny, you know, the Lamb of God as spoken of in the Gospels, um, you know, shed, shed his blood for us and, you know, all they want. And because, you know, because they, they try to extract Paul from the equation. Um, again, because of his, the clarity of the Gospel that he gives, the spiritual clarity that he gives. So much that he knows that the offense that comes against it, he said, even if you say I'm lying, it doesn't make God untrue. <clears throat> even if you don't believe, it doesn't make God unrighteous. You know, it's it's interesting and it's disappointing. You know, like so, like these early church fathers when they when they try to grab Peter for themselves, mm. they're really doing wrong. Because I know, uh, like Irenaeus does that. I don't think Theophilus does it, but because it, it's funny to think that it's how how clearly specified that Peter is 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 an apostle to the gent. I mean, to, to to the circumcision. Yes. And Paul to the Gentiles. Most certainly. Now it it seems evident that Peter did go to Rome, but I think Peter went everywhere there were Jews. <laughs> Right. Yeah, and Paul did too. So I mean, what what's evident from what it's evident 
now when people when people argue about what Paul meant when he said uh, the church in Babylon greets you, mm. P- Peter said that right. Um, that because some people are like well he he meant Rome, he meant that and, and and many people think he was literally in the city of Babylon at the time, you know what it was at that time, mm-hmm. but it, it's evident to me that he meant anywhere Jews were that wasn't Jerusalem. Mm. Um, just like the, they were considered in captivity, mm. in, in spiritual captivity. So, so he meant Babylon the same way like Bob Marley meant Babylon, you know, or the right. rest of the, or the early yeah. uh, Pan-African movements meant Babylon. Like it's a spiritual Babylon. And, and it's it, the same way Revelations speaks of Babylon, right? Uh, yeah. And uh, and because he's and specifically because he's the apostle to the circumcision to the Jews, and, and what he's done, again, me being a person who believes that that there is a, a specific place for Israel. Um, later on, that's that's distinctive, and I'm not talking about hyper dispensational, a different gospel one bit. I'm just saying that people will be recognized. So, for example. I know uh, Ethan's not here anymore, but like somebody who is like, like, let's say somebody like, like Ethan, who he, he's a, he's a Jewish convert or I, you know what? I don't know what he is, honestly. I mean, I know he's a, you know, he's a brother in Christ. That's all I know. And I know that he's. Amen. He, he definitely is a brother in Christ. Yep. Messianic he's right. believer. He's obviously in, into the Hebrew culture background, uh, everything. I assume that he's, he's the, the, the real deal. So the, the way many people would seem to have it is that he he him him he would need to shed that. If not, if we if he wouldn't need to shed that because out of pride, like right. oh that's just pride. We all gotta, you know. Then or we need to join that, like people like uh, like I guess CJ needs to be saying, mm-hmm. or especially people like Yahoo and the Hebrew Roots people. We all need to be just like Israel. Or, you know, honestly, I, I'm not sure because I think that uh, that guy, Mike Banner, uh, Nanya Biz, I think he more properly represents Hebrew roots. But I, 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 I wouldn't be I wouldn't be equipped to truly speak on that, really, of who more properly represents it. I can have a decent conversation with Mike, though. Um, yeah. I don't know much about his doctrinal beliefs. I don't know him that well, but he seems like, even if that is what he's representing, then he seems very um, passive to not be as fundamental as some of them guys are in that doctrine. Well, he's he's why he's, he's certainly intelligent, but this is where... Just like I, I said, I said to somebody le- lately, you know, it doesn't matter how, um, like, like how um, very much, like as nice as somebody can seem, like, and I, and I think I was talking about in, in context of somebody who, who a person would claim had lost their salvation. Oh, I knew them for 30 years and they were on fire for the Lord and then something happened and then suddenly they stopped believing and yeah. it's like, well, it's, that's a sort of that. That's an anecdotal thing, but but the idea that somebody like what somebody says, mm-hmm. um, how much they know about scripture and how well they can describe it, right? Mean nothing. They mean nothing uh, when it comes down to our being able to have uh, absolute knowledge on somebody's st- status on what because and here's the thing, Paul. If we're going to claim that we believe in OSAS, uh-huh. we better be clear on how we we deal with that. Well, I believe. See, this is my it's this is my. Easy. Well, you know what I mean. It's very easy if you think that somebody that the Holy Spirit comes and goes. Oh, you're saved. You're not saved. You're saved. You're not saved. So it's it, it can, in that case, it's very easy because then you can come upon somebody who's a complete, a complete, you know, evil jerk, 
and be like, well, you just need to get that Holy Spirit back. You had him once. Now you're going to have him again. And, and then they can just be like, oh, I got him again. And then it's like, OK, well, I hope you don't lose it again. You know, and now all of a sudden they're going to go. Out. It's it's a like I, I don't see how people can theologically sustain that sort of right thing unless they are not being uh, genuine. I mean, I got if I'm being unfair and saying that, then maybe that's the case. See, that, to, you know, to me, the way I believe what Scripture teaches, at some point, that's practice. No Christ, or you don't know. You know, <laughs> it, to me, at some point, that's practice and sin. I believe that's what first John's talking about. Um, and those that practice righteousness, you know, and I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to say this without, you know, there's so many um, angles on this, how people look at things, but I believe that there's false converts and I don't care if they're in the ministry for 30 years there or are, not. Yeah, there, there must be, there has, yeah. if you don't believe like, yeah. Uh, amen. Amen. Like the layman seminary view is like, I don't know how he contends with his, who, who is a false convert. It doesn't seem to be a functional, applicable, uh, is there any, any room for false converts? Like, well, if they said it, then, you know, must be it. Now, I, I know there are nuances, but I, I think I've heard, I don't know, I think I'm hearing some. I'm pretty sure Second Thessalonians 2 is talking about people that are false converts. Um, that they've been deceived. You right. Know. It, it, it makes sense <laughs> to me. I have no issue with that. Like people who, because, eh, because, and, and then once, once somebody either accepts that or doesn't want to accept it, then again, this is why we act so important in the way that we, if we are going to call ourselves OSAS, deal with this. Right. Can, how can you know? If, if uh, my position is you can't know, period. So this is why I don't even choose to participate in any of this lordship, salvation, free grace. I mean, I'm going to tell you, I identify as free grace. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's it. But only in the, but I don't like using the term because I identify as just simply a Christian. <laughs> because yeah. grace is free. The word gratis yeah. comes from the word for. So I've never actually chosen to use the term free grace. These are terms that get, that get. But but if there's anything that I'm going to identify with, or if you try to box box a viewpoint in with free grace or lordship salvation, which I still contend is a holy Calvinist ideology. Mm -hmm. yeah. this, this is what I believe that when you're transferred from the kingdom of darkness, to, yeah, when, when you're practiced from the kingdom of darkness, when you're transferred from that to the kingdom of light. And you go to Rome, or John 8, and it's talking about the adulteress. And then Jesus follows up with uh, whoever follows him, you know, will not walk in darkness because he is the light, right? The light of all men. Some people will take that into situations where it means that you'll always have that straight and narrow walk. Or you'll exemplify that because you can see. You can see things how you should see things. But... I would even go a step further and say that even when you mess up, even when you don't do good, right? That light's still there. Even though you went wayward or whatever, that light's still there. You're still in the kingdom of light, even though you tripped, fell, and went off whatever by your own decisions. <clears throat> Why is the light still there? This is how I know, I know that I know that I know, like the pastor told me, I know because I believe in Jesus. I don't stop believing in Jesus. I, I believe in him. I believe that he's going to, you know, no matter how I fell or how weak I am at times, he's going to bring me out of that. And then in that, there's going to be a maturity being accomplished in his training up. That is his perfect work sometimes um, for us being established in him, no matter what state we're in, no matter what's coming upon us, no matter what. Uh, the, the light is Jesus. He is the light, you know, like if people are looking for a way. He is the way. Always believe in Jesus. That's what it says in First John five that you may know that you have eternal life if you believe in Him. And and I know it's it ain't no tricky thing there. It's just very simple. That's but why man, it's but man. People have a hard time accepting. God makes it so not not complicated. He even says He's the Word. He says he, His His name saves. It says believe in his name. It, like there's so many different angles 
to look at it in order to to believe it and not necessarily have to have some 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 crazy theolo theological understanding. It's like, oh, Jesus is the word, the word that God said. What did God say? He said, believe in me. You know, he said, I'm your savior. You know, oh, well, how do you know that? Well, what's his name? He said, believe in my name. What's my name from heaven? Oh, what's his name? Oh, God is my savior. God, how many different ways does he have to say he's your savior and believe that he's your savior and you're saved by this? Like it's 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 like right in every person's face. It's so easy. This is why the, the devil is like like one of those like little clown shows that just try to put stuff in your face and oh no, no look here no, no, don't look over there it's, it's it's even though it's the clearest it could possibly be yeah it's, i think the reason people don't know is that... just as bright even if every single person was was blind right i believe it is as simple if you believe that the lord you trust him that he's going to get you through everything you're going to overcome the world by your faith in him and you believe that all that he accomplished and all that he is and who he is uh, is enough, then why is there any room for any insecurity if it's just that? If that's what's, you know, your engine behind everything. Um, if you don't believe that, then, I, then I, I definitely see why there's reason for insecurities. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Should some people shouldn't be secure? If if somebody is saved, mm -hmm. let's say for the sake of argument, that's all it can ever be. Right. Somebody is saved. Right. They're living a life of sin. Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to t teach them they're secure, even though there's no way I can know if they're actually saved or not? Right. And if I'm looking at them and saying, "Oh, they're living a life of sin," well, I mean, I don't have a right to say they're saved. No matter if they say, oh, they were so blessed, brother, they raised their hands at the service, they went to get baptized. That, none, of that, none of that stuff makes a difference. What you're doing is what you're saying is your proclamation. It has nothing to do with what God knows is true. Right. Because all we're talking about is how we're dealing with one another. And in any case, how right. we deal with each other is supposed, supposed to be in love. In any case, whether or not I've decided, oh, that person, you know what, I've made the decision they're not saved. They never were saved. They never knew the Lord. Now what? Um, it, you know, now scripture tells us very clearly if we're, you know, if we're talking about somebody who's trying to muscle their way into the congregation, then you, mm -hmm. you muscle them out. <laughs> are they, um, are they handling chastisement? An actual brother who's struggling, then you help them struggle like you would any other member of your family. But, but look, look at the church then that Paul was, you know, talking about church discipline, different things, how they, Sometimes they have to excommunicate because a person wouldn't repent or whatever. And imagine these antinomias. What they do is they're the ones that maybe didn't fit into the church because the way they looked at things. And now they have their own church. Are they handling the discipline and the training up, the chastening as a child of God? That's where I have a problem with antinomianism is that it isn't the fact that maybe they did accept Christ at one time and they got off on this weird doctrine or whatever um i don't know i wasn't there i don't know um well i was just checked well i mean you heard a lot of the it was again antinomianism is an event is a invention of the 17th century but if you listen to the stuff that Irenaeus was describing that's what you're talking about he said he's describing all the different ways within you know a few generations he said, "Oh, these these particular people, they hate the Eucharist. They don't attend. The, so, you know, yeah, there was one. There was one supposed church. That's all. That's another big thing that that Irenaeus seemed to naively and blithely. Yeah, there's one church where I swear, you know, there's one church of the whole world. We don't teach anything else. There's one, like, and he's right spiritually. But I gotta say, you know, <laughs> realistically, when it came to the real world." Um, the, the very things that he's describing is like, oh, there's people that, that have their own meetings. And then we see in earlier guys like Ignatius and stuff, he's specifically saying, if anybody goes and has their own meeting without the bishop of your lo locality, then they're they're devil worshipers. <laughs> Just consider them to be devil worshipers. Wow. Like it's as simple as that. We're one body in Christ. Um, if, you're if you're going and do anything else, against like that that's where it was by the point of what was that like uh you know the, the 100s the 10s 102 well the biggest misstep i've seen with antinomians when they start telling me what they believe 
is they believe that because the Bible says there is no sin in us, they don't look at it as Jesus taking away your sin, that you actually commit the act and you did wrong and Jesus took away your sin. They look at it as they cannot sin. Yeah, they, they don't have a proper understanding of yeah of, of, of they don't they don't they don't seem to have any spiritual understanding to be quite honest um if, if your only view of sin is the fact that you've done something and keeping out the fact that that god knows that you've done something and has to know what you've done throughout all eternity and he has to live with your your disgusting filth um you know every single thing that everybody's done god is aware of because he's God. So the fact that you've done it, nothing is going to erase the fact that you've done it. But the blood of Christ does atone for it. But it's, well, it's still the fact that it, it happened. But it's and the fact, yeah. It, deny all of this. They deny everything. They deny the atonement. They deny the Holy Spirit, which is, is indwelling. They, they deny. It, I, so again, if you want to look at these people and think that there's any chance that they can be mistaken for a Christian, uh, I, I have to disagree. Like, there's no, if they were to come amongst the congregation and say, hey, we're Christians, just like, no, they're they're not coming in. They're, they're, right. And I'm like, this isn't somebody who wants to wear jeans. This is somebody coming in, professing literally that if like, you call him a sinner, that you're the sinner. Like, he's literally just the most demon, like, that. those kind of views are just, pure demonism you know <laughs> right well if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth so we're not doing the truth if we do that and then it says if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we say that we have not sinned yeah. we make him a liar and his word is what does not it mean the truth in is us in? what's it, it mean, mean that it means that you're not in the truth you're you know, that's a false you convert. Explain to me what is something means without explaining that. <laughs> that's a false convert. This is what you have to get right when, when coming into salvation is that you know that you're a sinner and you need Jesus to save you. That's why I don't, I say it to people, it isn't about you turning away from sin. It's it's about you turning to God and believing that Jesus takes away your sins, that He that what he did it is the atonement, you know, and we're getting our sins wrought in God so the way that we practice our, our righteousness is by doing this. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's walking in the light as he is in the light. That, that's what he set out to do. He said that uh, he's gonna, he over, by our faith in him, we overcome the world. Right? And what they practice is, that when you come to him for salvation, then you don't deal with your sin no more because there's no such thing as sin. And the truth is not in them. You know, um, yeah, the truth's not in them. Uh, I do believe this, that we are eternally secure in Christ and we are saved, but that doesn't mean that we don't practice our righteousness and what we believe. That's the whole part of the relationship and the fellowship with Christ. So I believe there's people that practice sin. And it goes on throughout here. Um, they're not in the truth. And I believe that is the main heading for that. You know, what does that mean to practice sin? They're not in the truth. That means they're not practicing righteousness in Christ. They're not walking according to their faith. Or their faith, to begin with, is already corrupt. And I believe that is truly the source. Wait, are you talking about saved people? No, I'm talking about people coming to Christ to get saved. I'm talking about people that then they claim they're saved, and then they, how they practice their faith, right, is not in the truth. Yeah, I mean, it, and again, if I'm talking about a saved person or a not saved person, that, that can only be hypothetical. I can't talk about any particular person. And even if there's a particular person that I make a proclamation, I don't think they're saved. Um, now, it would be wise if anybody made such a proclamation to say, I don't think, to leave it subjunctive so that you're not making a bold uh, and unverifiable truth claim 
that person is not saved because you can't know that. So this is why. So if if God help me, if I'm ever going to make such a such a flippant remark about somebody, which I do and probably will again, um, <laughs> then I would leave it subjunctive like that. But it's for a particular reason. And if they, uh, and what you're talking about are examples of somebody that I have to say is not, and they never were. There isn't and if, much but even then, you can still preach them the truth. They're still, if it's, is if somebody's not open to receive the truth, right. or if, or if they've already filled, like you've heard the, you've heard the uh, analogy. Oh, you filled your stomach full of junk food. And so now when you come to the real feast, you know, you're not going to be able to sit and eat. And so, you know, you, you know, you're just going to, like, it's not going to work. So there's sort of a, an imbalance has occurred basically. Well, in that regard. I mean, in Paul's days, if people were acting that way, you know, and, and saying this is what's true and this is, how they're looking at their salvation, he would have uh, excommunicated them. You know, he with his authority, he probably would have sent them to Satan for the destruction of their flesh if they did come in, and, you know, in the truth and get baptized. And, and Paul well, with this. This thing, people want to pretend it was very cohesive. Everything was very cohesive uh, back then. You know, now. There's a point where Paul was first planting churches or going amongst churches of Christians that were already there. But I mean, <clears throat> some places, you know, like, do you think those Christians were meeting at the local synagogue? No way. And especially by the time Paul was making his latter journeys, um, that I, I would highly be, I would be very surprised if this, unless the entire synagogue happened to convert, um, if a, because, if a village or a town had a synagogue, if they had one, they would not have allowed Christians to worship there by the time of the late first century. I have, I have to think. Uh, even though it seems if you read Roman writers, I'm still convinced that when the Roman writers talked about Christians, they were at they well they, they when they a lot of times when they were talking about a Jewish sect did this or that, they actually meant Christians, but they didn't know any better but to refer them to anything but just Jews because that's what they did. Well, that's passed um, down from history for sure. But uh, but it's interesting because it I don't think it and actually from from reading the the Didache right, uh, it's clear from even that earliest time that they delineated themselves from Jews very early. You know, and so even in like, and I'm thinking of like the city of Rome, where they specifically had a big Jewish quarter. Um, you know, so I'm saying I'm talking about how Christians were not in the synagogues, but at that point, even they probably weren't even allowed in the Jewish quarter. And so you, you seem, it, it seems like there's there's going to be a natural um, delineation between Jews and Christians becoming even more and more segregated. As time goes on, uh, it's so yeah. I mean, it, it all it makes sense to me. Um, and then you can literally read the writings of these early church guys. And, and there's some stuff that's like it's just awful. Like uh, I think John Christanthem, Christostom, or whatever his name. Is. Um, I mean, why why else would why else would John yeah. say? They basically well, call the Jews like reprobates. <laughs> why else would John make that remark if we say we have no sin? Why else would John make the remark that if we say we have no sin, who would say that? I mean, just about everybody says that, that isn't in the Lord or that cares, like that actually has a conception of sin. Um, I think it depends on what, what you're talking about. You yeah, yeah, but it is, is John talking to people that are professing to believe or is he talking to non-believers? Uh, if you're asking me, I mean, by that time, John was coming up against the, the docetism, which said that things that happened in spirit, uh, just like, well, docetism almost seems to be 
well, the, the Gnostic sort of form of it where things that happen in the flesh don't matter. So they're not really sin because we're spiritual. Like that's pretty much what it taught. So you could do anything you want in the flesh because it's not really sin because we're spiritual now. Because right. Jesus became spiritual. He went from spirit. I mean, he went from a from a, a, a physical being to a spiritual being. So therefore, nothing that we do in flesh matters. So come and join the club and rock and roll. So, yeah, I think that's, in, in, in my opinion, that's likely who John is talking about. Jamie Russell says, For Moses had throughout many generations those who preach him in every city. On Acts 15, for Moses had, and is this, what's Acts 15? Is that just Stephen? What's the context here? For Moses had had, has had throughout many generations those who preach him in every city, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. Yeah, that's what yeah. Jews do. They read Moses in synagogues and all throughout, wherever they had synagogues. It's called the Diaspora. Yeah. Diaspora. Mm -hmm. but, but, but my take on First John, though, is, and I, I know I could be wrong, He's, he's speaking in the heresies, most certainly. Um, but in First yeah. John chapter 1, it seems like he's edifying people that may have, that he may be witnessing to. Um, like, like, it's sort of like, if you know there's something going on, if you know there's something also, going on. He was beyond witnessing. Like, he, he's a living, he was a living witness. I know, time. but if you know, it, I mean, it's sort of like this, in, in the way that he's saying that, if he's writing to somebody, that's a man. I, can you like, can you imagine like if if you knew him, you'd be like, dude, can you just can you just write more? <laughs> right, right. He'd be like, oh, leave me alone. I want to go preach the gospel. That's probably what he'd say. I know, but it seemed like John <laughs> is that and spread that if we say we have like he mentioned different things like if we say that we have fellowship with him, so I'm already assuming that he's pointing out there's people that are saying this uh and walk in darkness we lie and do not know the truth and then it says if we walk in the light as he's in the light which is we know that jesus is the light uh but we also know the glorious light of the gospel of jesus christ that lights in every man's hearts that hear it the, those that receive him uh that is the light that we walk according to is what he set out according to the gospel and that we will have fellowship with one another. And then it says the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. It doesn't say that we don't have any sins. And then it says, if we say we don't have any sins, you know, we deceive ourselves and the truth's not in us. Then it says, if we admit our sins and he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then if we say we have not sinned, uh, we lie and his word is not in us. So, My my whole point you is that you got to convince me that antinomianism is heresy, Paul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it is something that we have to notice in this is that he is mentioning things that would pertain to that. You know, he's he's calling it out where you wouldn't hear that as much uh, otherwise, unless there was something like that going on. You know, there's a reason he's implementing that. Yeah, John here is speaking against docetism, which, like I said, pretty much if there's anything close to what like preacher Perry you see uh, that 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 are the living embodiment now of, of what antinomianism is, that you can go and do whatever you want and it's not considered sin anymore because you're spiritual. That's literally what like I mean that's the fruits of docetism, as far as as far as you can understand. Yeah, whatever heresy they were faced with at that time, John is calling it out. You know, even the Gnosticism and all that, he's calling it out through them, them five chapters. Yeah. And he, and he brings you right back in the simplicity of Christ that if you believe in him, that you may know that you have eternal life. So if someone was to ask me how I know, I said, because I know that I know that I, that Jesus did this. I believe with all my heart. And I'm not going to stop believing. It's in me. I, I know it's true. All right. Do you want to listen to some of this? 
Sure. And uh, tell me to stop it at any time. And I'm thinking about playing it fast speed, but. Book one. Theophilus to Autolycus. A fluent tongue and an elegant style afford pleasure and such praise as vainglory delights in to wretched men who have been corrupted in mind. The lover of truth does not give heed to ornamented speeches, but examines the real matter of the speech, what it is and what kind it is. Since then, my friend, you have assailed me with empty words, boasting of your gods of wood and stone, hammered and cast, carved and graven, which neither see nor hear, for they are idols and the works of men's hands. And since besides, you call me a Christian, as if this were a damning name to bear, I, for my part, avow that I am a Christian and bear this name. So, um, yeah, one, this is the same, maybe this is the same time as, uh, Irenaeus. And also, obviously, you have pagans and Christians and Jews living aside, living alongside each other. But what's interesting is during these, these early writings, you, you see them writing against pagans more often than you see them writing against Jews or writing to Jews. Which basically tells me they already wrote the Jews off, <laughs> which I'm not saying is correct at all, but I'm just saying that's just the reality of the time period they were in. Because hmm. that's uh, again and again, you see during this time period, they're writing against, they're writing to, to Greek, the, the, the Greek, the Greek or Roman pagans and philosophers. And, uh, yeah, and there's only very few. And actually, after I do uh, Justin Martyr's writing to the emperor, um, I do want to do his dialogue with Trifo the Jew, which is interesting. But I'm I'm not convinced it's not you know that it's it's actually it's an actual dialogue with a real Jew. Like a Jew would sit there and talk to a Christian. I, I I'm not convinced it would happen <laughs> unless maybe there was a. But it, I mean. It, there, there must have been. We know there were Jewish converts back then, so the idea that a Christian wouldn't know the the mind of what a Jew would think, um, and because Justin Martyr, like so that's like Justin Martyr is like twenty years or so before this. Name be loved of God, hoping to be serviceable to God, for it is not the case, as you suppose, that the name of God is hard to bear. So hoping to be serviceable to God. So this is a hope that a Christian should have. Every single Christian should have, right? See, that's what I call kingdom walking, man. That that right there is what I call kingdom walking. Even if it's, listen, if it's just you being in a family and you being an example of Christ, and that's all you ever do, then do that. You know, that, that's your servitude. Maybe it's not to go out and minister and do all these other, th you know, but what if this is where God puts you, you know, wherever you're at, that's where you're at, right? Let your light shine in the darkness. Yeah. And then he says, you know, as not as if the, not as if the name of God is hard to bear, you know, no, this is our, this is what we want. And if you truly desire something, it doesn't matter how hard it is. I would say this, there are certain uh, servitudes that have much more demand than others uh, because of the position you're put in. Yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter how hard it is to the fact that you're going to do it. You're going to you know, do it anyway. Yeah, I believe that God's called you. It, you get, just buckle up. You entertain this opinion of God because you are yourself yet unserviceable to him. But if you say, show me thy God, I would reply, show me yourself and I will show you my God. Show then that the eyes of your soul are capable of seeing and the ears of your heart able to hear. 
For as those who look with the eyes of the body perceive earthly things and what concerns this life and discriminate at the same time between things that differ, whether light or darkness, white or black, deformed or beautiful, well-proportioned and symmetrical or disproportioned and awkward or monstrous or mutilated, and as in like manner also, by the sense of hearing we discriminate either sharp or deep sweet sounds, by the same holds good regarding the eyes of the soul and the ears of the heart. That is, by them we are able to behold God. For God is seen by those who are enabled to see him when they have had the eyes of their soul opened. What do you think of that? I, that would almost sound like a Calvinist verse, right? You have to have the eyes of your soul open first before. And there, there are some other early church fathers that use the same language. Um, remember, these, these guys all wrote each other and they had access to each other's writings. Um, so they, they, these dudes, they were friends, I would dare say. This is my only thing that, uh, with Calvinism. They say that happens before salvation as far as um, like a regeneration comes on you, like something extra comes on you specifically than what's being offered in the gospel and the Holy Spirit conviction that's going on. See, I think that we're all offered the same, but some choose to believe and some don't. I'm not saying that God doesn't come to us first, because I believe that wholeheartedly. He does through the gospel and the conviction of the Holy Spirit. We're saying, but, I th but I think everybody has that same opportunity, and they can resist the Holy Spirit or they can um, humble themselves. You know, we're saying by in the same way that people can tell light from darkness and like these great contrasts if you if you're um but if your life is is basically so far from god you're not going to see him mm. like it's it's not like it's not that you can't it's just that you won't because of your of what you're doing like yeah. this around yourself with so there is so i mean that there is a what, what the calvinists would call synergism right <laughs> mm -hmm. in that regard so mm -hmm. for all have eyes but in some they are overspread they do not see the light of the sun yet it does not follow because the blind do not see that the light of the sun does not shine but let the blind blame themselves and their own eyes so also thou old man hast the eyes of thy soul overspread by thy sins and evil deeds as a burnished mirror, so ought man to have his soul pure. When there is rust on the mirror, it is not possible that a man's face be seen in the mirror. So also when there is sin in a man, such a man cannot behold God. Do you, therefore, show me yourself, whether you are not an adulterer or a fornicator or a thief or a robber or a purloiner, whether you do not corrupt boys, whether you are not insolent or a slanderer or passionate or envious or proud or superlicious? Whether you are not a brawler or covetous. Whoa, whoa. What is super... To parents what is superlicious? Uh, superlicious? Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it means delicious only above... It. No, I don't know. <laughs> it's superlicious, not just delicious. Perlicious. Superlicious. Uh, well, licentiousness means like you think you can do whatever you want. Mm. Uh, to superless, to superless, to behaving at or looking as though one thinks one is superior to others. Ah, superior. Supercilious. I think the word is supercilious, actually, and I pronounced it wrong. <laughs> it superlicious. <laughs> it's supercilious. <laughs> oh. I think I, I probably pronounced it. I was going to say, I've heard of bubblicious. I never heard of superlicious. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Embarrassing. Kevin. What's up, Kevin? Yeah. Superlicious. How many people li listening to this uh, like, have, have turned it off after that? Like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Made it home safe from the, uh, the highlands of of the upper upper east side <laughs> yeah nice yeah this is uh 
Well, so far, Theophilus, uh, you know, he says you don't know God because you're not even serviceable to him. Not not you, Kevin, but <laughs> he's been the, the, this Autolycus guy he's writing to. And he says, just like some people have a have bad eyesight, you just you're not going to see God because you're 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 the mirror in which you're supposed to be reflecting God is covered with the rust of your sin. <clears throat> It's basically his argument here so far. Yeah, Rust saying that you're not dealing with it. It's been there a minute. It's interesting. But um, but no, if you wanted to say anything, Kevin, beyond that, let me know. If uh, <coughs> you did, man. So what do you do? Are you just reviewing a video you um you did, uh, Kelby? Yeah, this is an older one. Oh, okay. Well, this is like the second video I ever did. Like so, I guess like three years ago. <clears throat> yeah, so they're on the same time period as Irenaeus. Um, this guy was a bishop of Antioch. But um, I, again, I didn't find. He talks about the Trinity. He talks about like he doesn't talk about the the supremacy of Mary. He did, like it's he's he's, he's, a, he's speaking Christianity. Like these early church fathers too. They're for them. I mean, I'm not saying. That there's not like there's probably not one thing or two I would disagree with them on. I don't know, but again, like I, I have no reason to think these guys were 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 fakes. Like these guys, I, I believe that we should be able to recognize the Holy Spirit uh, in in somebody, um, either through their writings or through their actions. You know, and I think these early guys have it. Faux show. not sell your children for to those who do these things god is not manifest unless they have first cleansed themselves from all impurity all these things then involve you in darkness as when a filmy deflection in the eyes prevents one from beholding the light of the sun thus also do iniquities O oh man involve you in darkness so that you cannot see god you will see yeah, so uh, that was the the gist of that particular. Does that sound like? Could somebody call that work salvation? Because <laughs> if you're not doing these works, you're not going to be able to see God, you know, or whatever. I I don't think so. Because <laughs> I think we're 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 working in one way or another anyway, uh, as living creatures, and usually we're working in iniquity. So. To think otherwise is to deny that God actually is as holy and had a plan. Well, Yo, I know. one thing I know. <laughs> one thing I know is true is that when I was, you know, going into things that I shouldn't do during my, you know, at the begin after the first three years of my Christianity, um, I I did not have anything in me that was replicating what God, you know, where people could see God in me and I wasn't seeing things right, you know, and I had to repent, you know, um, that's just a like proven a reflecting. This is a th people argue about what the Holy spirit is or what the Holy spirit looks like, or they talk about, you know, they want to blaspheme and talk about cast for the friendly ghost and all that kind of stuff. Like when really he is the reflection in yourself as a child of god and again your mirror if it's if it's rusty then nobody's seeing it and also if you surround yourself with people who are also rusty you're not going to see it and so this is where people get isolated they isolate themselves it's very dangerous because eventually you have nobody praying for you nobody cares about you like god cares about everybody but it, at some point in a normal person's life, like people, you know, we're, we're made to be social. We're made to pray for each other. I, I'm convinced of that. And I believe that God blesses fellowship, you know, in, in Christ. So um, there's many blessings that come from that. Amen. By the way, this picture on here, if because this picture is from like the first or second century, you see the guy 
You can see the lines coming out of his mouth. Because when they read stuff back then, they actually read it out loud. Like they, they had, the like people had rooms for reading, like to read without saying it out loud. I like some people think like was just something people didn't do. Like it was, like some people like you'd be considered a weirdo if you if you read without saying it out loud. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> say to me then, do you who see God explain to me the appearance of God? Here, O oh man, the appearance of God is ineffable and indescribable and cannot be seen by eyes of flesh. For in glory he is incomprehensible, in greatness unfathomable, in height inconceivable, in power incomparable, in wisdom unrivaled, in goodness inimitable in kindness unutterable. For if I say he is light, I name but his own work. If I call him word, I name but his sovereignty. If I call him mind, I speak but of his wisdom. Whoa, 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 go back, go back, go back. I speak of his... Did you see what he just said? The very thing that I... Always... <laughs> yeah, but, but if he said, if I say his word, I say sovereignty... You know, I always come back with that with Calvinists. I always say, well, God can be sovereign by decreeing something and us using our free will to respond. If he decreed that, that we must believe that he's still sovereign because we live according to every word that proceeds in the mouth of God. Right. That is sovereignty. That doesn't change yes. the, the, you know, the relational aspect that God has with his creation. Um, or it doesn't make it biased in any way that if God comes to you and preaches the gospel uh, through men and the Holy Spirit's convicting, I, I don't think he does that for some and he doesn't do it for others. You know what I mean? Um, anyone that hears that has the same opportunity. But the thing is, is that they argue that that doesn't make God sovereign. And, and he agrees that it, because God's word says it, He's sovereign. He, he can have an expectation. Yeah, and it's, he's the creator. That's why, again, the idea of commandment, when it says, obey my commandments, and we see Christ, Christ again and again as God's eternal word and, and of commandment, then he is he who we are obeying. And when God said... Uh, this is what these other guys are talking about too, again and again. When God said, "Let there be," you know, "let these things be created," by His command, that's Jesus. So they equate Jesus with commands, like, it, like the commands of God, as you know, in a person, all that Trinitarian stuff. But that's why it's it's so simple to to hear Christ, to obey Christ, and when you're obeying Christ, you're obeying the entirety of the law. <laughs> Mm. Right. <laughs> you know, wait, tell me, are you are you preaching that I don't have to get circumcised and I don't have to keep a literal Passover feast? Um, that I don't have to oh. have to. I, I, you're saying I'm allowed to mix fabrics and eat pork? You heretic! <laughs> New York City. <laughs> that stuff's made in New York City. Are you saying that the Mosaic Law, the Covenant yeah. of Moses, is not a, the New Covenant? <laughs> How dare you? Oh man, are you guys saying we're not under the old contract, but the new contract? Yeah, I guess I'm just a, a, a Paul worshiper of the Apostle Paul. Like, uh, you know. So I guess God, I guess God made a mistake the first time. Whoops. He's learning. He he had to he had to try out the 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 Israelites were his trial run <laughs> before he figured out what to really do. Man. I got into uh, into it with CJ earlier today on a, his community post where he's he's sitting there preaching that we literally keep a Passover, and I said, I no, no, we don't. That's crazy. Like, uh, well, I, so I can see if you're trying to be poetic, if you're trying to be spiritual about it, but it, there's a point where you're not anymore, <laughs> you know, and that seems to be where where he crosses that line. Where he's see, because the thing is, I ask him, so are you saying like I have to go? And make a feast and, and you know eat the lamb and 
you know, he'd probably say, no, it's just, you know, by believing Jesus, you're keeping a Passover. And I say, well, no, but that's not what keeping the Passover is. You're, you're redefining what it means to keep it. Yes, that's what it, that seems to be the brunt of a lot yes. of his arguments is redefining what the, the, what the thing means and just saying, well, no, oh, yeah, because it'll be like, yeah, yeah, but it just means something else now, or it's a whole different meaning of the right. Word. Like, that's not how language works. <laughs> I'd like to ask him too is where, where does the Bible tell us that the way we keep it has changed? Where well, does it say? I, I would say this the intent is changed and that is that they were worshiping or they were doing this out of a way of looking at something that was to come we're operating out of something that is finished yep and i can't get them to make that progression kevin no matter what i say he turns it into so what you're saying we don't have to obey the law and i'm like oh here we go again <laughs> and kelvia i heard your comment earlier i'd be careful calling yourself free grace be Oh, well, well, you know nothing. the baggage that comes along with that. No. Well, well, we're not. But, you know, he don't mean to bring it. We bring the baggage. <laughs> the grace, the, the you know, grace then God You say that, and people are gonna look at you and say, "So you agree with Charles Jennings?" Mm -hmm. And then you're like, "Well, no." And they're like, "Okay, well, then you're not free grace." All right. Well, yep. <laughs> they take a long walk off. They take a, a, a long jump with a short, with a swift. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what, what people. I'm going to describe myself uh, with what I believe. Um, if they want to bring accusations against yeah, he, me, straw men using other people's views. Kelly did. Kelly wasn't making a statement that he agrees with Charles at all. So, uh, many. Well, I mean, Kelly, you 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 believe that if you're saved, God God will be sanctifying you, right? He's saying nothing no different That's than what, what Graham said. Means. <laughs> well, exactly, but but. Free, but people what? that hold a free grace theology say that what? it might not happen. Say that again. You know what I mean? But, but, but people that hold to free grace theology, that's see, that's that's where the argument about the lordship versus the free grace thing comes in. Is free grace says that sanctification isn't guaranteed; it might happen. Mm. Whereas lordship says no, it is guaranteed because you're saved. God will be actively sanctifying you. That's that's where the mm. debate comes in. So people that are going to the left side with free grace say. Sanctification isn't guaranteed. It might happen. It all depends on how much you're willing to be um, submit to the Holy Spirit. You might not, you know, be sanctified at all here on earth. Where the Lordship says, no, if you're saved, you're going to be sanctified. And if you're not being sanctified, well, then you probably haven't been justified. What do you mean by so, sanctified, though? <clears throat> uh, a change. God changing you. Um, like you see growth in your Christian. So you're walk. set up. You you're see growth. Yeah, but salvation. Who, who is seeing the growth, Kevin? You? Not only you, but people around you, too. You know, you're called to be a light. Let your light shine before okay. men. So yeah, there will be the a change. Way yeah. that you, what you're describing can work is a one-person show, unless you can read people's minds and know what people are believing, right? Otherwise, well, let me ask you, point to it. Well, Kelby, when, when Jesus says, by their fruit, you can know them, like, how do you, how do you understand that? In the faith that they're in. Well, yeah, yeah, so their 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 fruit, their faith is demonstrated by their fruit, just like James says, right? Yeah, but even if a man falls, how he deals with that will show you the fruit. Yeah, that doesn't just uh, that doesn't discount. Yeah, you don't know what somebody, what's happening in somebody's heart on the long run. Like you, you just can't know. It. Look, man, I've seen guys sitting there struggling with their addiction, and then they were the in their heart. They were telling other people, please don't do what I did, man. I'm trying to get yeah. through this. And, you and know Paul, I mean? that's a that's that that's they're showing fruit there. They're not yeah. they're not promoting sin, they're not loving yeah. their sin. They're 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 saying, yeah. I'm struggling with this, don't do it. That's that's yeah. different than somebody that claims to be a Christian and then you know goes out and buys prostitutes and doesn't care about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think somehow we gotta make that divide because that's why I say yeah. faith. You know, that's why I say that they're in the faith. I'm not saying that they're walking circumspectively perfectly to everything. But I am well, saying, I'm not saying that neither. Who cares? So, all right. So, let's say I, I just said, Kevin, yo, I, I went and got a prostitute the other day, dude. Uh, I'm really struggling. Are you going to tell me I'm not saved now? <laughs> no. What's your attitude about that? Then you're what's not consistent. And, and, and my attitude is, is you know, I really, I don't think I can stop banging these hoes, man. Oh man. That's <laughs> um. Well, I, I mean, that's I'm extreme. Trying, I think I'm that's to, so. Because I'm trying to go. Because at what point? My point is, at what point? Do you 
can you actually say you were never saved in the first place? Yeah. I would ask, do you, do you love do you love your sin or do you hate your sin? Yeah, but at that point, all you can do is agree with what I'm saying or not, and I could just be lying. See, my my, my, my well, that's true. You could be lying, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit back and I'm going to watch you for a while. And if I see that your words aren't matching with your actions, that you're not really sorrowful about this, then I'm going to start to doubt that you're actually saved, and I'm going to start giving you the gospel. Sit well, back and watch. That hey, this is while. this is another question I have for Lordship: Is that how do we measure the time on that? Because I know people that have slipped for years, right? And then when they right. woke up, when they woke up, that's when they come to and realize they need to deal with their sin. You know, uh, like it's almost like they got away for a while, really bad, and then how they come back though they they repented you know they believed in christ they admitted their sins they but it took a time so how do we measure what that timescape is like that measurement how would we use that well i don't know unless we're going to call jesus a liar because he said by their fruits you will know them so unless jesus was lying now oh. how exact amount of time i don't know but jesus says we can know so i'm not going to say he was wrong I know that's why, Kevin. I'm not trying to. You're like, claiming we're supposed to know who's who's literally saved at all times. That's that's what Jesus preached. On. That's what he taught us. Okay, that's what so he then, said. Then why did you just say no? We can't know who's saved. I mean, did you did you not just agree that we can't actually know the status of somebody? No, saved? I said we, we can know who's saved by you look you look at the fruit. What okay, and, so and sometimes you, you, I'm claiming that you have the authority to look no. at somebody and claim that they are saved or not. Yes. I'm not saying I have authority. I'm saying that I can That's know. what you just said. That's not said authority. We can know because otherwise Jesus is a liar that I can claim that somebody's going to hell or not. You know? Like I'm no, it's not about me saying people. they're going to hell. It's about me looking at them or examining their fruit. Like I can say what so let's say let's say the person is an alcoholic. And uh they tell me, Oh, you know, um, I believe on the name of Jesus, but I'm not willing to give up the booze. Like I, I just, I care about this too much. Like it, I can't get through the day without drinking. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would, I would seriously doubt that person actually knows the Lord. Opposed okay. to an alcoholic. Well, that says to me, call an asshole. Are you going to give him the gospel? Just like any, I mean, what are, what are we talking about? What's the fruits of what we're talking about here? Well, that I did a study on that. And if you look up fruit in the Bible, it can mean many things. No, no, no. I'm not talking about the fruit of the spirit. I'm talking about the fruit. I'm not either. Oh, that, okay. That's one of the fruits. I'm, I'm just talking about the word fruit in general. If you do a word study, I'm talking about if you decide somebody is, if, if, if we're, if you're, if your determination on, I mean, I, how do I, I think it all has to do with the person's attitude. It has to do with us preaching the gospel or not. The gospel is a message of hope. If I'm worried, well, yeah. I, I'm saying there's, it shouldn't make a difference to me if I've decided that this person is saved or not whether or not I'm going to give them a message of hope, unless they're literally being hostile against that message itself. Mm. Um, it's that simple. But what you're doing is providing me for a reason to not provide that message of hope to somebody. No, that's not true. No. If you, if you, if you, if you're coming to the conclusion that you don't think this person is saved, then you should absolutely give, preach the gospel to them. Yeah. Um, th this is, I mean, this is this kind of dilemma that I kind of run into. And, and may, you know, I'm not saying that I'm swayed it either way. Uh, I'm okay with saying I leave that up to God and I just edify and preach the gospel. You know, let, look, if you're saying you're not willing to, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to be insulting or anything. So don't, don't take this the wrong way, Kelby, because I'm not trying to be rude. But if, if you're not willing to look at someone's life, you know, at, let's say you know someone for 10 years and they claim to be a Christian for, I don't know, eight of those 10 years. And you're examining that that eight years. If you're if you're refusing to use your discernment to come to a conclusion, like is this person their profession does it have substance to it, or is it just is it just vain? Like you know the book of James is talking about. If you're not willing to do that, okay, fine. But all I'm saying is that Jesus preached and he taught in the book of well, Luke. I, to to not do something like that is to turn off your brain. So no, I mean obviously I'm not talking about don't look okay. at somebody and make a particular rational judgment. Right. right. Once, my question is, you're using this as some kind of a doctrine, as if I'm supposed to, to use this information on how to love somebody or not. And we're called to love. Well, no, 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 no. Kelby, when did I ever say 
When did I ever say that we shouldn't love the unsaved? Uh, dude, you're like best friends with Graham Gould, and you're going to tell me that that dude is showing love towards yes. the unsaved? Then I, then I don't know what love is supposed to look like. I mean, I mean you want, if you if you if you give the the truth to somebody, and they fight against that truth, it's not it's not unloving to tell them they're being a demonic scumbag because that's exactly what they're being. He's just telling them the truth. To what end? The unloving thing would be to say, "Oh, God bless you, brother." While they, you know, they're Come Unitarian. Or something. Ke Kevin, you can know? I ask you something concerning that though? Uh, have you ever considered that is that necessary? I mean, I wouldn't do it as much as he does, but I'm not going to condemn him for it. You know what I mean? I mean, if you're really trying to get somewhere with somebody, do you think that that would be something that was being necessary that you would need to say that, or? Um, not always. I think it really depends on the situation. Right, but you know the nature of people that, especially if somebody's lost, right? Let's just say they are lost; they're in darkness. Yeah. Right, and, and we're dealing with a fragile creature as it is. You know what I mean? Especially nowadays, golly, people get offended over nothing, right? Right. And sometimes, you know, Paul said he had to become whatever he had, had to in order to get the gospel to him, which I believe he meant sometimes he had to condescend to that that mentality in order just to have a conversation with them, you know? Yeah. Uh, like where they're coming from. And meet well, let them me show you. Let me ask you this. And, and shine a light in the darkness. You know what I mean? Would you... Okay, so after you, okay, let, I, like we all know Ace philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's say you have your common person that doesn't know the gospel versus Ace philosophy, and you, and you know how Ace is now, yeah. and, you're, and yeah. you're, trying, you're talking to these two people, and you know Ace is going to oppose you with his heresy, and he's dogmatically uh, rejecting what you have to say. Right. You're obviously not going to treat those two the same because you've tried to deal with the one before. No. And it was fruitless. So you're going all you have is rebuke for the one guy. The other guy, you haven't dealt with him yet, so you're gonna give him a chance to see if he's gonna be reasonable. Right. Um and I think that's where the distinction needs to be made is people like Ace Philosophy. Oh well, yeah, they're 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 satanic pigs. Yeah, um, yeah, maybe we are painting some broad stripes here that you know there's a lot of details we have to consider. You know, I, I mean I I I see your point, Kevin. Uh, like when it comes to Ace philosophy, I'm going to be honest with you. I just, I think that if there ever was a blasphemer uh, that I've talked to, you know, those people that believe what he does are definitely blasphemy. You know. I just think we're naturally going to be fueled by these rational, these rational decisions we make because our, though the way we, we go about things is it's a dance between our emotions and our kind of rational mind. Well, there, so that's where if, if I'm making an actual rational decision, like, right. let me weigh this person. And now again, I'm not talking about like ignoring pre people's sins and and not reacting to sins at all. But again, like mixing it as a my, my big thing is just putting it as some kind of like a doctrine because it's it's based around making truth claims that because your argument to that, Kevin, is that I'm calling Jesus a liar if I don't claim that that we can have this this perfect knowledge <laughs> all about somebody. Yeah. Well, see, that's why I say the fruit of faith. Um, I, I feel comfortable with that. You know, are they in the faith even though they're failing? Like like Kevin, like you and I had, had times when we weren't doing good in, in our walk. I don't think you doubted your salvation during that time, did you? Or did you? Oh no, I did. Did you get saved again, or? <laughs> no, no, no. I, remember, I, that's when I was Pentecostal. I was an Arminian. I thought I could lose my salvation. Mm. That's before I came to the full knowledge of the truth, where I didn't, I didn't understand salvation. Right. Which contributed to my backsliding, you know, because you see all these different Pentecostal people, and they, oh, I have this gift and that gift, and they're sitting over here, and you know, and you're like, well. Does God love this person more than me? How come he's not bestowing me with, you know, these spiritual gifts and things? Then you look at yourself like a second class citizen in the kingdom because this one over here has got, you know, gifts. And then you don't have any and you've been praying for certain things and it doesn't seem like God's answering. And you're like a, in a puddle of mud and then everyone around you is like prospering. And and you start to doubt and you start to, you know, wonder like, oh, maybe I maybe I wasn't as holy as I thought I was. Maybe I wasn't really saved. 
like it causes a lot of confusion and stuff. And that, that contributed a lot to my backsliding. But that wasn't the only thing that contributed to it. I was also angry with God because things weren't going the way that I wanted them to go. Mm. You Do know? you think you're safe at that time? Um, quick answer, yes. Um, because I had heard the preaching of the cross and I really believed it. And I changed, man. Like, uh, I started thinking differently. I, I hung out with different people. Um, certain sins that I had for a long time <clears throat> fell off. And that change stayed. It was consistent for almost two years before I started having these doubts and fears. And I know, but so, yeah, you're still, you know, now, met yourself when you were having at that, that particular junction, would you have said, thought that you weren't safe? Or like told that person that they weren't safe? Well, if you would have asked me, like, Kevin, how do you feel about the stuff you're doing? Mm -hmm. I would have told you that what I'm doing is evil and wrong, and you shouldn't do that. And uh, I was never proud of the things I did. I would well, admit to you. I'm not adverse to calling, to saying somebody's not saved. And there's very specific reasons for, for calling somebody not saved. If somebody straight up declares, you know, like, I think there is grounds to call somebody, like, to say, you 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 literally hate the gospel. I think there's actual grounds to say that, like, that people that declare it. Um, when it comes to, you know, like, the people that hate the teachings, like, we were talking about this earlier, people that hate the teachings of Paul. Like, is it legit for me to call them satanic? <laughs> Um, and, uh, God haters and, and haters of the gospel and all this kind of stuff. Well, yeah, because you can't really I think understand the cross without Paul. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I think, I think, yeah, I think the point I wanted to make is that if Kevin, if somebody would have come in and said, well, I don't see any fruit from you right now. And you're sitting there saying, though, the thing that would clarify it to me is how you believe. It isn't that you're, you're not showing any fruit, but the fruit that I would see is that you still hold to that that belief, you know? Yeah, uh, but I would I would agree with them that I wasn't I wasn't being fruitful at that time because yeah. I was I was in rebellion. Right, was, but, uh, but do, would you see that so if somebody come in and said that you were never saved that that could have harmed been like been a stumbling block to your faith? No, because I would have told them what I believe, and I said, well, if I'm wrong, show me how what how am I believing what's wrong? What's the what's the truth then? No, what you were the, yeah, yeah, you were in the truth, but I'm saying that person saying that though, would that be considered something that, like like somebody trying to throw a stumbling block at you? Well, no, I think it would have convicted him, and that's exactly what happened. Is uh, well, not exactly, but I heard a preacher was talking about he was preaching on Philippians one six on the radio, mm -hmm. you know, while I was backsliding and I and I was starting to try to open my Bible again, and because you know I felt really bad about how I'd been living, and um. You know, it's funny, too, because it was a Pentecostal preacher preaching on Philippians 1, six, and the guy doesn't believe in eternal security, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's sitting there preaching on Philippians 1, six. And he's like, God will bring the completion of what he started in you. He's like, you hang on and you have faith. God's not done with you. <laughs> and I felt that in my soul, like God was just speaking to me loud and clear, like, I'm not done with you. Did you find you know? it ironic that he used a Pentecostal preacher to do that? Yeah, right. I, I mean, I think about it now at the time. I'm like, wow, that is ridiculous. Right. Like, because <laughs> obviously the guy didn't have a full understanding of what the verse was saying there. Um, but that's, that's I mean, still, God still. Used it. Yeah. Well, the words, the word isn't it, no matter who's saying it. Yeah, right. You got that right. So, yep. yeah. Yeah. But th that's not even the worst, Paul. While I was backslidden, um, an old ex-girlfriend of mine. Um, we didn't get back together or anything, but I fooled around with her, right? She ended mm -hmm. up getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. And then she went out and had an abortion behind my back. Oh, wow. And yeah, so my my foolishness and my rebellion led to the death of someone. Hmm. And, uh, yeah. Do you, do you blame yourself for that? or? Oh, of course I do. Well, did, I, you, uh, did you want that baby aborted? No. Well, why do you blame yourself? Well, the, the the whole thing never would have came up 
if I if I was doing what I was supposed to do, right? Well, that doesn't mean that she didn't do wrong. Well, I, I know that, but I told because uh, after she got pregnant, I said, "Look, I have no interest in being with you whatsoever." But you know, I, that that if that's my child, you know, I I'll try my best to remember. You think you were a Christian at that time? Well, you yeah, because I potential mother of your child that you don't want to be with her. I, I, I would so no, here's I, 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 you can't I, be with her. I, she can't be trusted. Sorry, sorry. I, she listen. I dated this girl before I was saved. This woman is a psycho. She looks good, but she's absolutely nuts. She's on medication. She's got problems. Um, I and I, 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 I can't have a committed relationship with her. I've, I've done it before. She, she, she cheated on me multiple times. She couldn't be trusted. She was just the kind of chick that came around for a good time, and that's all she's good for. And um, but I told her, I'm like, look, I can't take you serious. Like, I, I can never be with you again. Like, I don't trust you. Um, you violated that in the past, and it's like, I was trying to tell her, I'm like, look, I'm I'm messing up. You know, I'm trying to get right with the Lord, and I, I can't be with you because all you do is just evil stuff. You know, and it's but as far as this child, if this child is mine, and she's like, she's like, yeah, but you know, I'm not gonna raise this kid by myself, and broken home and down it on if you're not going to be here permanently then i and i'm like look you're not going to do anything to that baby okay if you don't want the baby give it to me then and um she left you know and then i try calling her or whatever and she answered her phone and then uh, i come to find out she she had she went and got an abortion and um but the the whole thing is is that the no one would have died mm -hmm. if i was just doing what i was supposed to do and just not talk to this crazy woman at all. Well, you know, I know, but, but you got to look at it in the truth. And, and, and I'm not trying to give you a, a pass on it. You know, the initial sin. Um, that's what you're guilty of, right? Are you guilty of what, what she did later on that you was against? No. See, here's the thing, Paul, because when I got when I got caught when I, I suspected that something was going on because she wasn't answering the phone. Right. And she sent me a text message that said, I'm going to do what I got to do. Um, I, I got up early in the morning and there's a few clinics near where I live. And I waited for hours at the well, I'm not going to tell where it is, but I waited there for hours waiting to see her car to see if she if she pulled up in there. And I didn't see it. So I went and I, I moved on to the next day. I went to the next one. I was sitting there for hours, like right at the crack of dawn, like early in the morning, waited and waited. And like I just felt so bad because knowing that this crazy psycho is going to kill somebody. Especially, you know, with my child. But I guess she went to a, a different clinic that was outside of town or something. And, um, yeah, she just, she went and did it, man. Yeah, I paid for my, my, my uh, I was there, I, I was there at the, the waiting room. It was uh, 200 bucks. Okay. Like about as long as like going to a sub shop and making a sub. You know what the sad part is, Kelvy? She's on like DSS or whatever. Like she she didn't have to pay for that. She didn't pay a cent. Th th those are tax dollars that was used to kill my child. Or in Georgia. You know, I don't I, like I'd be lying to you if I if I told you I'm I'm not still mad at that woman. Like I that there are there are some days I wish I could choke her. She's still alive. And, um, Oh yeah, she's still alive. She's see, but here's the thing. So after that, a few years later, she fell into something terrible. She she started she hooked up with a heroin addict and he got her hooked on drugs. See, so now she does the heroin thing. And uh and that's the kind of person she is. You know, I, I can't I you just can't trust her. She's not the type of woman you could be with, man. She's really unstable. Because I tried it. You can't you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. And um this is so well here here's the thing too. And I, and I don't dis, I don't disagree with you, <laughs> but I mean the Lord can do whatever He wants with somebody. That's true. That's, yeah, I know it. That's but true. That's, that's you know what the sad part is, Kelvy, is that the way the way I reconnected with her is she actually met me at my she met me at the church I was going to. Like she, I don't know how she knew I would be there. I don't know how she knew what church I was going to. Before all that. Yeah. So before we hooked up or anything, like I like I told you, I was feeling bad. I, I started reading the Bible again. I wanted to get right with God, and sure enough, she comes in the church, sits 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 near me in the pew, and I'm I'm looking at her like, "What are you doing here?" You know, and um, we walk out. She's talking after church, like, "Oh, Kevin, I'm trying to change and this and that," and oh, no, 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 you know. And I was talking to her, and I 
you know, I went over to a place where we're chatting and, you know, stuff happened, man. I just it was right. dumb. Yeah, I've both. never really known a lot of the people I hung out with, or like this guy George in the chat here, this freaking reprobate, this uh, profligate that I've known for like 30 years. Like, they've never been, like, the way you're describing this person, like, nobody would ever, you'd never catch them dead in a church. Like, to go there without, as far as left, not that I'd ever, maybe with family or something. Bro, this woman is so manipulative. I remember when we broke up, I broke up with her because she was just unreasonable. I, I She went out, I packed my stuff and left without saying a word. So this woman tried to manipulate me. This was years ago, I don't know, back in, like, 2007, 2008. And she, she called me up and says, Kevin, you can't leave me. I said, why? I'm pregnant, right? And I'm like, you're pregnant. And she's like, yeah. And then I hung up on her. She called back two hours like, yeah, I lied. I wasn't pregnant. Please don't leave me. I'm like, no, you keep violating my trust. Like, I don't want to get into all the details of the terrible things that she's done to me. But um, I put up with a lot from her, and I never once hit that woman or anything. But I put up with quite a lot of abuse from this psychopath. And um, she likes to manipulate people. She likes to play the victim when she's actually the aggressor. Um, she likes to twist stories to make herself look good and make you look like the villain. She, she tried to do that to me in front of her dad multiple times and stuff. You know, it's like, wait a minute. You got the story backwards. Like, you're, you're the one that did that to me. <laughs> once, Psycho. When she was mad, she started slamming herself into the closet. Like, as I was oh, saying. Wait, wait, so, she can, so she can claim you did it to her? Yeah, and her mom was standing yeah. in the other room. Yeah. Wow. And then, and then her mom and was like, "Did you?" And I just just one look at her mom. I was like, "How like how dare you think that I did something?" Like that? And she was like, "Yeah." That was uh. And, and so you know what I'm talking about, Kelby. That's the that's the type of that's the type of woman that that this girl is. Absolutely nuts. There's, there's certain lines that that you can't allow to be crossed. I mean, when it you comes got down that right. To, uh, to what's uh, sane and um, and and safe. <laughs> When it comes down to it, I mean, when it comes down to like, then I don't know. It's just it's the same thing with with any kind of crime. I mean, that sort of, that sort of thing is a crime. I mean, if if you if you were to be accused of something like that, I mean, you know, and there are certain crimes in where you forfeit it your, you know, your right to be associated with anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to derail the screen, the, the stream, and turn it into the Kevin history story or whatever. But um, no, nah, it's all good. Yeah. Well, no, but um, no, but in thinking about the, yeah, again, the, if because before I was I was making a dichotomy, and if I was going to go between lordship and free grace, if I was forced yeah. to, which Kevin, if you're going to force me to, right? <laughs> uh, no, I'm just. But um, but, and and I think and what I was saying was because earlier before you got there was because the because. I've always associated the lordship with the Calvinism, and I can never associate with something. Calvin. See, I want to address that too because yeah. that's not okay. So it's true that Calvinists usually are lordship, but it is not exclusively like a Calvinistic way of looking at the Bible. Well, obviously, you know? I mean, otherwise, you guys are, you know, you and uh, you know, you and Graham are. I don't think you yeah. and Graham are completely uh, irrational. Uh, when you're, you know, um, Baptists, there's Baptists in our lordship, like myself. Um, you know, the church I go to rejects free grace theology. I've talked to the pastor about it. I made sure he wasn't free grace before I joined his congregation. Uh, he rejects that. Um, the, the, it, it's on your definition, because I've heard definitions uh, like, from, like, like, okay, do you think Jesus is Lord or not? Whether or not you think Jesus is Lord, you know, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, um, yeah. it's not the same thing as Lordship Salvation Doctrine or Lordship Salvation Theology. Now, if you say it is, um, I mean, if you're then, again, I mean, then you're just defining it differently. Well, what, what goes Thank along you. with the lordship, like I said, is your your ongoing sanctification, if you are saved, is guaranteed to happen. Whereas people that identify with free grace say it, it might not. Well, so do you think you could think Jesus is because if we're talking about Jesus as Lord? Yeah. And if we were to talk about like Lord is in the sake of King James Bible. L O R D meaning whenever capital letters appear, it means Y H V H. Mm -hmm. And so meaning that he's God, because if, if somebody actually knows what God, what a God is, the God, not just a God, 
which I think right. everybody that's rational does. And if well, you, let me clarify. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not that Jesus is just Yahweh, but he is also your despotes. He is the master of your life. You have submitted to him. He is your master. He is the king. That's what lordship salvation. It's not only declaring that Jesus is God, but it's also the declaration that I have submitted to his lordship and he is the master and ruler of my life. Whereas a, a free grace person will say, you know, like free grace, like Bob Wilkin will say, you do not have to have a commitment to Christ at all. Whereas I would say, no, that's describing a false convert. Lord and master and sovereign. I mean, if these are, these are all words that mean the same thing, aren't they? Um, to make him no. master of your life. I mean, so what? What? Do you, I mean, it, it like a, what? What? So what is? If you're talking it, again, this is where you're 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 dragging it down into theology, which is fine in its own right, or pulling it yeah. up into yeah. theology, however you want to look at it. But once you get into the theological level, then we have we could just start a whole new argument from zero versus zero to what does God Here. want. Does he want us to follow the law? Does he want us to tell me? I have a question for you, and this will determine, you know, listen, this one question I'm going to ask you, this will determine if you are aligned with free grace theology or not. As a Christian, do you have to be committed to Jesus Christ? Yes. Then you're not free grace. Yes, I am. And, and our definitions are not the same. So one of us is straw manning the other. Or or one of us is question begging. Well, okay, committed to Jesus Christ. Is there any leniency for the newborn, for the one that's carnal coming into the you know the process of maturity? This is my problem with lordship is that sometimes like there's no way I could believe sometimes what they teach in the ministry I'm in. It's impossible. Um, well, if we're talking about the Holy Spirit changing us, Jamie, and being born again, if we believe then the Holy Spirit indwells us. And I and because when I describe all that stuff, I, I think I think, Kevin, where, where we're getting tripped up together is because when, when I go in to describe the Holy Spirit sanctifying us and making us born again to me that includes everything that you are saying that we should be looking at at a perceptual level from the outs like externally where about and when i describe when somebody actually believes and is saved and born again that they are they are you know they're like you know you put that that bread in the oven it's cooked <laughs> and, and now you're you're cooked and now you're you're you are the you're the complete work Mm -hmm. um like and and so everything's included in that um because that, yes. it's, it's our it's our angles that are, are well, yeah but I'm, I'm i'm specifically talking about our ongoing like salvation or our, our ongoing sanctification i'm not talking about sanctif like past tense sanctified like as it's already been done in eternity i'm talking about here while you're still alive on this earth where god is conforming you into his image because someone that calls himself free grace theology would deny that, that it's a possibility that that doesn't happen, that you're not being conformed at all. You're talking about, ser you're talking about servitude though, right? Being, being, being made right or being made whole for servitude. Uh, in a sense, yes, but I, I'm, I'm more specifically talking about your mind, um, your thought process. Like God isn't like God, it, the, com the conforming, the changing is an inward change that displays itself outwardly. So if you're not being conformed, in your mind to Christ, then it's not going to manifest itself outwardly. If, if somebody is saying that that's the case, then th I don't think they're Christians. And so they can call themselves free grace. Exactly. All they want. Exactly, I'm, Kelly. I'm that is my point. Grace because I'm the one who was freely given grace by the Lord. And so if somebody else who wants to pretend they're a Christian calls themselves free grace, no, I'm not letting them have the title. I want the title's mine. Title is the Lord's because it's His grace and it's free. Okay, so so you like the title free grace, but you reject the theological position that's attached to it. I, I object to boasting. It's that not a do. theological position. It's an aberration of, <laughs> of the gospel. It's a, it's well, Kelby, a... I'm specifically talking about what is called free grace theology. I believe that grace is free. I agree with you. Grace is free, but I reject what they call free grace theology. I think it's heresy. 
Yeah, I don't. You know what? Maybe I'm not. I can't sit through some of that sometimes when Charles is going on and on. Uh, I can't follow him sometimes. Um, I like to call him the chart man. Charles, Charlie, charting Charles, you know? <laughs> well, I went in there one time and he was teaching Greek. And I, I, I'm, I know I'm ignorant, so maybe that's part of the problem. But at the, at, on the other end of it, even if I wasn't ignorant, um, I don't see how anybody learned anything. I'll just say that. <laughs> He's all over the place, you know, not connecting anything, not making any kind of congruency. And I, I get lost in the sentiments and the charts, you know, after a while. And it's like, what is the point you're trying to make? Just make the point. Um, and with me, it, it, the way that he looks at everything is experiential and what, what is the other? Positional and Positional. ultimate. Yeah, well, okay. In our salvation, we are positionally saved once we're saved. Once God saves you, he looks in your heart, he knows your heart, and God saves you, you are always saved. I believe that with all my heart because if I didn't, then I, I wouldn't know that I'm saved because I believe in Jesus, right? Uh, I, don't, I don't trust me, I trust him. So anytime the doctrine turns into you trusting you, but does that, does, and then on the other hand, does that give you the, the right to just uh, go out and start teaching things where I can go worship the devil and I can go do this. See, to me, it's a matter of faith. Again, I'm going to just stand on the fruit is your faith. Uh, and what does that faith look like in somebody's life? There's people that go in and out of seasons, go up and down, get, get wayward, come back. Uh, and the whole time the Lord strengthen them, purging them, doing his perfect work in them. You know, if they are truly his, the others, uh, they go into false doctrines, I believe. Uh, if there's ever, you know, a falling from grace, it's kind of it's kind of ironic that they call themselves free grace and then they teach things that are actually fallen from grace. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think it's evident in their fruit and their faith and and you know how they what they say they believe and what they teach and what they hold to. Um, I think that's how we know them by their fruits. And I could be wrong, but that's what I believe. Well, in, in Luke chapter 6, down towards the uh, later portion of the chapter there, like starting at like verse 36 or something like that, Jesus talks about trees being known by their fruit. And then right after he's done saying that, he says, why call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I tell you? Right. So Jesus is linking fruits into actions. It's not just what you believe, it's your actions. What was he telling them to do? What was he telling them to do, though? He didn't specify. He just said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, not do the things I tell you? So that means if we never, if there's a time that we don't obey him, we don't have the right to call him Lord? No. Okay, so what does he mean then? What is he talking about? He's talking about, he's talking about if you, if you trust him, you will do, you will keep his sayings. Mm. That in, the, was, in our maturity, we will, won't we? When we come into exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. But is there is a time that we're not in that maturity, right? No. So what do you mean? What I think I believe that the message he was getting is that the will of God is that you believe in Jesus Christ, you trust him. That it isn't that you're gonna have a perfect walk, right? Oh, I, I never said we're gonna have a perfect walk. It can be up and down. But the the thing I'm arguing for is that if you are saved, you will try to be obedient to Christ. I'm not saying you don't fall short or even backslide, but but someone who's a child of God will always come back. Yeah, it's their faith. Uh, that's why I, I hang everything on the fruit, on the faith, and God's doing his perfect work. What What is it saying in Romans that, who are you to judge another man's servant uh, to his own master? You know, he belongs, and, and he said that God will do it, and God can make his servant stand. And so the way I look at it is, how you'll know is, you know, I don't know at this time and place where they're at. Uh, you'll know them by, are they trusting in the Lord? Are they, are they believing what God set out in Christ, even though they might be going through a season or whatever, you know? Yeah. But Paul, you can't, you can't just limit fruit to things they believe when the Bible describes fruit is also your actions. Your, it could be your thoughts, right? It can be your doctrine. Um, 
it, it could even be a reference to procreation, like having kids. It all depends on the context, but it, it, it would not be, it's incorrect to limit fruit to just what you believe, you know? Well, I, th I think that fruit produces fruit, you know, that the only the Holy Spirit can produce. I believe that's sowing into the spirit. That's what I believe sowing in the spirit means. Otherwise, what are you doing? If you're not believing in the way that think God set it out, he said it so particularly in a way that you have to put all your trust in Christ. And if times get hard, he came to save the sinner and you're, you're going through a hard time in your life. This is what I teach people. Trust him now more than any time. You know, this is what he come to do. Uh, the last thing I want to do is, is put a stumbling block and say, well, maybe you're never saved. That's not up to me to say. I'm not the judge. It's up to me to teach them the gospel and to edify them. And that's between them and God. Uh, see, I don't have to know. Like, for instance, uh, when I'm in this ministry, there's a lot of people that I just can't fellowship with because I don't know. You know what I mean? And if they're caught up in things that are, are wrong, I, I'm definitely not going to be a part of that. I'm not going to condone it. I'm not going to associate it, you know, associate with it. Uh, but that doesn't mean I don't spend time with them still, you know, one on one teaching them the gospel and edifying them in the truth without me judging whether or not they believe or not, you know, um, or looking at their fruits. Because I know that they're in a time when they're, you know, they're being made mature. They're coming into things and I know where they're coming from, you know, this real dark place and they're, they're learning to put off the old man. But I, I believe you have to truly sow into the spirit to do that, which means you have to trust Christ through all these things. You know, it's our faith in him is how we overcome the world. And, uh, then the Holy Spirit produces fruit. And as you mature, you walk in that fruit. And, and in the end of the day, we're only going to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's going to do a work in you. See, now this is what I do believe, and I would agree with some lordship, that I do believe that eventually if we live long enough, you know, if the Lord don't take us out because we're not listening, um, there will be a maturity in this fruit. There, it will, there will be fruits that, that we'll be known by, you know, most certainly. Because uh, I, I don't believe in a, uh, a God that doesn't follow through with what he says he's going to do, you know. Uh, but again, I still appeal to that there are people that are, I've seen them, um, go through a long time, a long season of struggling, you know. I mean, literally struggling. And then, the, then I see the fruit, you know, afterwards. So I, I'm just not quick to get on that bandwagon, you know because I really don't understand everything. But I do know that it's safe to always edify them, and it's always, you know, it's not my place to say that. I don't have to fellowship with them, you know. Uh, if I think they're up to no good, I'm definitely not going to do that, but I'm still going to minister to them. So, I just, I don't know. I don't really get concerned with that, because the ones that I fellowship with in my church, uh, they definitely show fruits. You know, and then there's some of them that are new, that they're coming into this, you know, and what we want to do is edify them, uh, no matter where they're at, you know, and hope that they get right with the Lord regardless. And at the same time, we protect our church. If there's someone in there causing any kind of thing, any corruption, bringing any, you know, uh, that lump, we don't want it in there. And if they refuse to deal with it, you know, we don't want them uh, affecting any of the young people or anything in our church in that way. So is this uh, is this something that a moderate lordship position? Is, this something is he you've talking heard? to you or me? Is this something you've heard of, Kevin? I need to be educated on that. See, I, I don't, I don't do this moderate thing. It's either you're one thing or another. Yeah, but this is this is what I would say. You, you have to. And Kevin, I I hope you don't take this personal because I'm going to say some things that you've already told me, right? But I want you to get this because I, I think sometimes I'm misunderstood. You know that you and I, if somebody would have come to us and tried to convince us that we weren't saved because we weren't had any fruits, right? that they weren't seeing the fruits or any kind of maturity. Um, we wouldn't have believed them. Would you say that is true? Um, well, in my heart, 
I knew that I had believed, but I had allowed confusion to creep in. But I do believe this, that if you are living in sin, I don't think you should have assurance. You should get back. You should, get, you should repent. Well, what is your salvation based on? Uh, the finished work of uh, Christ. Right. Is do you it, think people can have false fruits? It, can people have false fruits or not? And if they can, I think your position falls apart. Well, my salvation is based on what Jesus Christ did, right? And that doesn't give me the right to just go do whatever. You just have no way of proving it. That's all I'm saying. I'm not See, saying that's right or wrong, but it's, it can't work because you can't disprove if none of the fruits are all false and people are all liars. Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm saying this. I'm hesitant to say if somebody's saved or not, right? Because I just don't know that. That's what I've been called to do. I've, I've been called to edify and preach, you know, proclaim the gospel. Um, I believe that God knows. Well, hang on. I got to ask again, though. So, Kelvy, when Jesus says, by their fruit, you will know them. I mean, what are we what are we supposed to do with that? We don't ignore it. But you're putting that against and others. And what Jesus you also said. Mean? You're thinking that, that means that, that, we have direct spont like actual spontaneous knowledge about somebody's salvation like if you're not saying that then what are you saying well i think i think jesus wants us to use discernment which is a gift that he gives his children right you can discern mm -hmm. you know make a judgment call discern what's going on there you never can is this wrong? a christian that is backslidden or is this You have to discern is this a christian that's backslidden or is this or, or was this a false convert like tyler vale vela whatever his name is right mm -hmm. he claims to be agnostic or whatever now is that someone that was really saved is he in confusion or is that or is that someone that was just putting on a show for a while or, or thought he was a christian but he never really trusted jesus i tell you who does know that's god and ty and and that man himself. What's the answer to then, then, Kevin? Well, I'm going to just stick with what Jesus said. By their fruit you shall know them. So I'm going to say, yeah, you can know. Mm -hmm. I'm sticking with what Jesus says too, but my understanding of that and your understanding might be two different things where... Um, and I, I, I don't, I don't know if it's two different things, but maybe, one, you know, maybe I'm not considering something, or you're not, Kevin, on this, and, and that's the allowance that we have. Oh, well, hold up, Kevin, okay, okay, that's somebody that's literally denying Christ is he's literally denying the gospel. This is not the same thing as somebody who is claiming, like, uh, uh, and again, I don't even know what this. You know what? I, I, I don't even care. I really don't. <laughs> I don't think it's for us to know all these things, but I do think that there are people that show their faith, right? And they're profitable unto men like they're supposed to be. And they do the works of the Lord and you see Christ in them. And by those works, you know them, right? But then you go to James two and it's talking about dead faith where men in themselves don't know that you're in the faith. God knows, but they don't know. Right. That's the same exactly. thing. With Abraham. How many people do you know that are proclaiming the Lord right now that are preaching the gospel that are that are reading? Because wasn't Tyler Villa doing that? So in that case, you can claim until you're blue in the face that they're a brother in Christ. You don't know. And if you're right. claiming, you know, you're a liar. You don't know. And if you're sitting there saying, well, Jesus said, well, you could have told me that two years ago, talking about Tyler Villa and calling me that Jesus is saying, saying Jesus is a liar. But was Tyler Vela saved or not? No. So then who would be calling Jesus a liar? You would be, not me. I think there are people that are known by their fruits, right? Because they... Does that they make do, any sense? Does, that, do, does, they, they, does, well, well, does they, that make sense or not? Well, no, I believe there are people that Why are Why isn't known. it work the other way around? No. Um... No, I understand. There's all kinds of situations, right? Where people can be deceiving and uh, the whole time, you know, and then there's situations where, well, it looked like he had fruit then. So, you know, what I guess Jesus think? is a liar, Paul. 
yeah, it's the if they went out from them because they were never of them, how long were they with them before they went out from them? You know, I mean, I think eventually you can know things about people when they show their true colors, right? Uh, if you, if they even live long enough to do so. And I believe people can hide things that we don't even know that they have their own particular wrong belief or whatever. Uh, but I believe that there are ways that we can show that we're of the Lord to other men and be profitable. Like James two talks about, uh, where we do walk according to our faith. That's what, you know, Paul reprimanded Peter about. He wasn't walking according to the faith and he repented. And that showed fruits to me that showed fruits. Not that he, at the time he wasn't being fruitful, uh, that wouldn't make me doubt Peter's salvation. It would make me just, you know, the, see how he responded to it if he's in the faith. And um, that would show that, you know, he is in the truth. He was just doing wrong. So what does that tell us? Preach the gospel and edify them in Christ. God's got that. What is the use of these? These what, what? What even are they? What is the use of them? If somebody was explaining to me what they believe and it's false, I have no reason to believe that they're saved. That that, that doesn't mean I say they're not saved, but I have no reason to believe whatsoever that they're saved. Right. Um. If they're not in the truth, what God set out, and they, they're teaching something else, and that's what they believe, then as far as I know, you know, they they, they haven't come to Christ yet. Um, that's all I can know. Well, true. I can, I can, clear, so, I can so clearly see. So, yeah, I mean, give, give me any example. There isn't going to be a single example to where, yeah, you're going to say, okay, that until we're standing in glory with the person. Um, now, when, all, when all things will be revealed, when all, yeah, Paul said, just wait to the judgment. He said, when all things will be revealed. And this is, I, I don't think this goes with ourselves at all. You know, or with somebody else, and somebody else makes a proclamation because uh, basically what that's saying then, if 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 you're gonna if that position is gonna stand, then we have to believe somebody for for when they're making proclamation. I don't know. Is, is, what is is this just me being paranoid? I mean, uh, this this is another thing. I know that we can communicate with words and being the truth, for it, like so many people do when they're right. false teachers. Right. I I think a life lived for Christ is, is always evident of the fruit that, that, you know, the root in the fruit. Um, I think there's people that have accepted Christ and they don't have as much fruit as other people do. It's not as evident. Um, I think there's going to be rewards for people that do such things. But what I want to know is what do you believe? You know, um, and then let's go from there. Let's start bridge building, you know, um, Let's work it that way instead of bringing a stumbling block in, you know, to the faith of, of trusting in Christ, even though they might be going through something that's just terrible. Um, let's let's tell them to trust in Christ, you know, and preach the gospel and edify them in Christ. You know, let's do some kingdom teaching too. You know, the the very thing that's inside us that, that we've been given with the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, let's. Give them the opportunity to do that. You know, if they don't want to do that, then so be it. I can't, I, I'll tell you this, as many people as I've went through in the last whatever years, um, I can't be concerned uh, whether or not I judge somebody properly, if they're saved or not. All I can do is teach them how to be saved, you know, what God set out and edify them in Christ and whatever they choose to do, they do. Um, and that's where I leave it. I don't know. It's uh, there's it, it's a knowledge claim that can't. 
I think there are those that are very evident in their faith, though, because of their walk with Christ, and that is the right thing to do. I don't care what anybody says. I, I, that is something that we should be doing. And when I wasn't doing it, I was wrong. Well, I would treat you somebody know? like a brethren, and I would believe somebody buddies a brethren, because that's what it is. We can't have like some kind of perfect knowledge. But I, will, I, will, I believe we can have actual love for people and and whether or not they we have a think it's mm. the, the spirit in us which is the spirit of love is uh to, to, to try to say that that's not making it that that that's not making a discernment not only are we given the spirit of love we're given the, the spirit of power and you know, like when the Holy Spirit come on the uh, the apostles, then they were given power and they went out and preached and they were speaking in tongues and all these things. You know, they were able to do whatever whatever God set out that he wanted them to witness, to verify that it come from God. That's what they were given the power to do through men. And God was working in them and through them. Um, well, which ones? How are we supposed to know which ones truly were being worked on in them and through them? Well, there was fruit from it, but was it 3,000 or something repented? Okay, well, well, with Scripture saying that 3,000 repented, then yeah, I absolutely believe 3,000 repented. Yes, for sure. But even if it was one, wouldn't that be fruitful? Uh, I don't know, one fruit on a whole tree? No, what if there's only one that received it? Depend on the, uh, <laughs> the the situation and the. And the, the do you garden. think Do you think God would have a man preach to a thousand people and one get saved and he'd say it's worth it? Uh, well, whatever the case, I have to believe that whatever God says is going to be worth it. Well, even one's worth it, brother. I promise so if you. Someone asked me to. to to figure out how that is, I, it would be interesting. But that has to be what we believe. I believe it's whosoever will believe. I believe that with all my heart. And if it's only one, it's worth it. Because the angels are rejoicing, and the sinners come home. If Jesus will lead the 99 to go after the one, that one's worth it, ain't it? Yeah, whether or not we can see it or not. Yeah. That's the problem. What I, I look at it like this. This is what right. I'd say to people. What if you were that one? Ain't you glad that that preacher showed up and did that, even though 999 of them didn't respond? I think, that's, I think that's being fruitful, you know? I think God would yeah. would do such a thing. And he does. There's no question of it. Mm. That's why whatever the case is, we're supposed to, as far as what, what the, the Lord is telling us to do in emulating what he's doing, uh, <laughs> it's showing love for people. Now, when, when it's talking about casting out brethren, that there's a well, see, there's a discretion there as well. People who claim to be Christians, mm -hmm. or who claimed to be Christians, and who are actually pre or preaching a different doctrine, right. or preaching a false doctrine, as opposed to people who are because there are sinners and hopeless, rep evil, reprobate, however, however many different types of things you want to call the sinners who don't know or haven't heard or don't believe for whatever reason the gospel mm. and I, I i certainly think that we should have a greater contempt <laughs> for yeah you know for one over the other is is but 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 trying to decide uh i mean yeah and in, in either case what's the weather vane you know what what is the compass by which we're supposed to be deciding on like uh, it, it's it's also it's always supposed to be pointing to the lord in any mm -hmm. case so if i if i'm standing before somebody who whether or not i think they're they're saved like they're, they're, they're saved or not I, again 
I think a lot of like the free grace people, I've seen their, their, their study of the Holy Spirit, like, no, like just kind of be all over the place anyway. And mm. as far as I can tell, the majority of people claim a side without really uh, fully like knowing, like it, it, it's just like not really knowing precisely what it all is anyway. So, and so, and, and so I'm saying I pr prefer to, to say free grace. I'm not claiming that as a side. <laughs> mm. I'm just saying that based on the, the, the verbiage being used, uh, it is what it is. And unless you're going to come and say that we can have these knowledge claims on. And again, yeah, I'm going to make judgments, but I can't ultimately know. Like, do you just truly know? It's more to me. It's more of a concern than it is a judgment. It's because um, I just don't think that's my place. Um, a but rather than the, was it? The, I mean, a concern is a judgment as well. Like if you're concerned about somebody, you're making a judgment. Now, if that's you're a, I think it's more. I think it's like, discernment. I hope they suffer. You know, like now versus that, I hope they succeed. You know, those are two different concerns. Right, but, and they're they're based on judgments. Which which are also based on underlying criteria, and well, what would it look like if our underlying criteria is like? Uh, and, and again, all these things are completely hypothetical. Who are we talking about? Are we talking about the, the person who's preaching a false gospel? Are we talking about somebody who doesn't ne has never heard the gospel? Are we talking about somebody who's uh, like, or someone wants to say, well, they're all the same. They're all the same, and it's like, well. <laughs> well, I, you know, in discernment of the spirit, in discernment of the spirit, I would look for another Jesus, you know, claiming another Jesus or another gospel and that they come in another spirit. Because if you have the right Jesus and you have the right gospel, the Holy Spirit is what you're given. Um, so for me, um, the Holy Spirit would would confide in who Jesus is, Lord. He is the Son of God that came in the flesh. He's Christ, the Messiah. He is Lord. And you would believe that what he accomplished in the gospel, you come to him wicked and you believe that he saved you from your sins. You believe that. Um, that, to me, literally coming to Christ and trusting in him to do so uh, is the fruit that I'm looking for. Uh, then from then on, okay, we have some maturity to do. You know, we need to do some kingdom walk. And I, I know you don't like that term because it's cultish sometimes. But uh, I, I do want to say that, you know, the kingdom was ushered in with the gospel, you know, in Christ. Um, and I think this is what's lacking today is that uh, and, and this is where I would side sometimes with the intent, I think, of lordship. And, and I'm being as, as forgiving as I can on that. Uh, the intent on lordship is that, listen, there's more to salvation than just saying you believe in Jesus. It's, it's actually walking with him also now that we have the salvation. Now that we are saved, we're coming from this premise that we're already secure. Um, let's conform to him. You know, let's let's walk with him. And, uh, yeah. Um, bum, 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 bum. True. My, well, my, that's my, my bigger issue is only God uh, knows. knows yeah. all things. Well, Paul said that, you know, uh, judge nothing till the day that the Lord reveals everything. So. So basically, yeah. basically, we've been called to ministry. We haven't been called to the judgment seat. Can I go on that? Chief musicians. Thou knowest my down sitting, mine uprising. I mean, hey, obviously only God knows. I mean, God does know. Nobody's denying that that God knows in any case. Yeah, that's but how it works. It's always amazing when people claim that God can't know or doesn't know. Uh, well, at that point, you basically have Zeus. <laughs> See, my, my whole contention with the language that's used 
going back to the law of Moses and different things like this. Hate um, telling, hatred. Yep. My whole contention is, is that we come from a standpoint where they're not looking to it to be established. It is established. Uh, sins are paid for. We've received that. Now we're walking in what Christ has done. We're not looking to find favor with God with what we do right according to the law. We're wanting to walk in these things because we are saved. Because he fulfilled the law. He paid the debt. And we have to move forward in our progression in the new covenant. You know, um, we have to have that new wineskin um, entering into us with, with a wineskin that can receive it in the newness of the spirit. And the spirit itself, I believe, writes in your heart what the Lord wants. You know, uh, what is his the law of the Lord, whatever, however people want to state that, uh, which is to be of faith and to continue in his love and bear one another's burdens. Um, I believe if you walk in this way, that you believe that you're already made righteous, that all the things that are concerned in the law, that, you know, morality and different things that we need to be concerned with, not so much the ceremonial um, things that, that was actually a shadow of things to come because we don't want, we don't practice that anymore. We practice in the fulfillment in Christ. So, yeah, I'm not looking to him. I'm looking back on him. It is finished. And I believe that we live according to the Spirit. We're led according to the Spirit because that's what we're given. We're given the Holy Spirit. Um, so we trust that the Holy Spirit's working in us and leading and guiding us and when we read scripture, we're given understanding, you know, in the new covenant, how we go about things. To me, I believe what the spirit always points you to is what Christ has already accomplished and to operate from that, what you've been given. And it's going to teach you the spirit of grace is going to teach you to turn away from ungodliness. It's going to be the goodness of the Lord that's going to turn you, you know, turn you into a willingness and the desires of your heart. Uh, a desire and a heart has to be a willingness. It would be interesting to talk about uh, or to consider the nature of reprobation itself, if that's even the right word. Um, Reprobate of the faith? Is that what you're saying? Well, so I think you would agree that somebody can have... Uh, well, finally, what do you think? Could somebody be having... An, could actually have a legitimate inner dialogue or whatever you want to call it with, with God since he knows all thoughts and, not, and actually not be saved? Like, think about Balaam. Now, there's a difference between when Christ came and resurrected, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, these are the kind of questions as far as, like, oh, was Balaam saved? I don't think Balaam was saved. Well, uh, yeah, what did Jesus say? It's good that I return to the Father because the Spirit will come and he'll convict the world. Now, was that what the Spirit was doing prior to that? Or because it's finished in the promise in the new covenant, this is what's... This is why we're led by the Spirit, not by the letter. The letter kills, the Spirit gives life. So I guess ultimately here's my thing against, if I'm going to sum it up with free grace versus lordship, my, my problem is actually what with lordship is, even if you adhere to everything lordship, you actually can't know if somebody's saved or not, period. Free grace is like, now, if I was to choose free grace, that would be like, oh, they weren't actually saved to begin with. Well, that sucks, but I still believe that that uh, that I believe the gospel. Now, some would say, oh, oh, that person, I thought they were saved and they weren't. Like that's that's where that would lead. That's the only place I can see where that leads to. Mm -hmm. You know, like because I'm looking at it in the, the in the the, the negative light. Like, we say, oh, this, you know, your works are showing or proving your fruits and this sort of thing. It's like. Right. In, but it's like, well, 
yeah, that that can also be. Can well, also we be, we can agree there's things that are hidden also. that were that people can be deceived by, right? You can't use that to prove anything, salvation wise. I mean, you can agree with that, right? There's things that are hidden. There's things that are evident. Um, <laughs> there are things that people are hiding. It's deceiving. You know, they could be playing church instead of actually being the church. Later, George. <laughs> I don't. I think Jesus makes a difference in your life, man. I really do. Uh, but I don't believe that that says that you're always going to be in that way where people can say, oh, I see his fruit. Um, I think you're going to see their fruit in their faith. And that's how you'll know. Eventually, anyway, if, you, if you're around long enough. I don't know. I don't know if I, <clears throat> I'm enough of a, a good enough judge of. Yeah, what's the verses for that? Uh, on having a relationship with somebody. <laughs> James. Judging other people. What is it, James 3? Let me see. No, it must be James 4. Yeah, from whence comes wars and fightings among you, come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lust. You adulterers and adulteresses, and these are people, in my understanding, that are worldly, uh, know you not that the friendship of the world is the enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be, therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, and that spirit is little less? I think that's what Paul is talking about in Romans seven. But anyway, he he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And these are people that are tossed to and fro easily in their doctrines. Uh, when you're settled in on Christ and you find rest in him, you believe he sets you free, your hearts will be purified. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Uh, speak not evil one of another. Now, I always wonder, what is he talking about evil? And this is what he goes on to say. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother, speaketh evil of the law and judge the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver. Who is able to save and to destroy? Who art thou that judges another? Uh, yeah. I don't know. And just like I was saying. <laughs> And this so goes back to what I was saying very, very early on in this stream about, because you had brought up this passage about saying, if the Lord willeth, you know, but don't say that you're going to go to such and such town, you know, but say that the Lord willeth. And and, and it, I spoke to, or at the end, where I was talking about how it speaks to, we want to always speak what's true. No matter what, so and even if the fact that you make a claim, did the bit, do remember we talking about this earlier? Making a truth claim that we can't actually know if it's going to happen or not. The Lord willeth. Yeah, are we being honest how we're going about it? Yeah. So if you say, "I'm going to go to such and such city tomorrow," you don't actually know that that's going to happen. Right. So even though you don't mean to be a liar, you know, which I guess that. Well, you're not you're not being honest. That's not the liar, but that's that's, that's 
you're but because that's what it is. Because you, that's a thing. People know they don't know. Yeah, that, that's the only reason I use I use the word liar. But it's more like people are lying to themselves. That you can't proclaim things you don't know, but you can have. How can I say it? You can have hope, discernment. Well, the Lord will. You can have discernment in what is right and wrong, right? But I don't think they can bring you to the judgment seat because uh, 1 Corinthians 4 or 5 through 8. Remember when we went through this in Corinthians? It said, Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make obvious the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. So this is why I take this position. It's not my. It's not up to me to say whether or not somebody's saved. It's up to me to minister to them, and you know, set out what the record that God set out in His Son, and and to follow uh, up with that in, in kingdom walking, which is what I like to say. But where you become like a child, dependent on the Lord, and He builds your house. You know, what well, He's already you're established in Him as the foundation, and He's the one building your house. And you trust him. I don't trust myself. I can't keep the law. Doesn't mean I can't try to obey it, but in the entirety of it, I cannot keep it. So why would I try to do something that is impossible? Uh, so what does that mean that I don't obey the law? Or no more? See, this is what it gets turned into. No, I'm just saying I don't put any trust in that for merit with God. I put all my trust in Christ. And to be honest, he does a work in you. You'll be keeping that law or whatever the morality is a lot better than if you try to do it on your own ability, you know, to, to present yourself to God worthy or, or something. Um, because it is a, I think it's a, it's a standing principle that it has to be because of what Christ did that we do anything in God. He is the only way we do all things through him, which strengthens us. And now people want to turn that around and say, well, then I guess you mean you don't have to do anything that the law says this and that. Again, if you're led by the Spirit, as you mature, maybe not at first, but as you come out of your carnality and come into this maturity, that's going to be the last thing on your mind. He, you know, who can say I have made my heart clean? I am pure from sin. Diverse weights and diverse measures, both of them alike, abomination. Like what? What are we judging by? Um, now, like again, I'm not because this is even where I started. This is why when I first went on that that guy's uh, what's his face is uh, like anyway, I'm not going to talk. I'm trying to defend. Yeah, I don't. I don't agree with that. Well, I know the Lord hates unjust weights. We're in the grace of God. Where does that put us at? You know, I, I don't. I don't know. Well, we can certainly know. Like again, I'm not saying we can't know things. We can certainly know things and make judgments and try to make righteous judgments as best we can. Like, absolutely. But knowing the Lord is knowing, you know, our our limitations and understanding them. And that's why we're, we're supposed to have grace in all things, I think. I um, do. I do agree with that side, though, on Lordship. Sometimes that the thing that's lacking, I believe, in churches is the family, relational community in the church where we're holding each other. I, I don't want to say accountable like as in. um you better do this or else. But hey, look what look what the Lord's done for us. Let, let's do this. Let, let's, you know, look how much He loved us. Look, 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 look at the eternal security we have in Him. Look at, look at all that He's done. Let's do this for this reason. You know, this is why we're doing this because of what He's done. Let, let's walk in what He's given us. You know, and mature in it in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ through His grace and truth.
and somehow when you say something like that, Kelvy, it gets convoluted into you don't believe you should do anything morally right. You know, whatever, you can just do whatever you want. And again, that's the mucking of the waters. People are not going to get it. You know, it gets distracted. It, I believe what I said is honestly true with what God set out. And that is the way that we do things. Because that is what he set out. Not because I'm sure of myself of knowing things. I'm just sure of the scripture that teaches it. Yeah, keeping on, keeping on, basically. <laughs> Keep believing. Steve Perry had it right. Don't stop believing. <laughs> Are you still going to be awake? Are you still up for a while? Continue this. Yeah, go ahead. If I call him word, I name but his sovereignty. If I call him mind, I speak but of his wisdom. But if I say he is spirit, I speak of his breath. And if I call him wisdom, I speak of his offspring. If I call him strength, I speak of his sway. If I call him power, I am mentioning his activity. If providence, I but mention his goodness. If I call him kingdom, I but mention his glory. If I call him Lord, I mention his being judge. If I call him judge, I speak of him being just. If I call him father, I speak of all things as being from him. If I call him fire, I but mention his anger. You will say to me, is God angry? Yes, he is angry with those who act wickedly, but he is good and kind and merciful to those who love and fear him. For he is a great chastener of the godly and father of the righteous, but he is a judge and punisher of the impious. And he is without beginning because he is unbegotten, and he is unchangeable because he is immortal. And he is called Theos on account of his having Tetheokinai, all things on security afforded by himself, and on account of Theen, for Theen means running and moving and being active and nourishing and foreseeing and governing and making all things alive. But he is Lord because he rules over the universe father because he is before all things fashioner and maker because he is creator and maker of the universe the highest because of his being above all and almighty because he uh, okay so he's calling him lord he just said he's lord because a b and c right <clears throat> Now, does that automatically make mean that he's a saved person because he said that? Or it's like, okay, well, what does it mean as far as, like, these are all... I don't know. He himself rules and embraces... Oh, I was going to say something. I was, was going to say this. When, when we're saying Jesus is Lord... There's two things to consider in this. One, the idea that, that the Lord exists, we, we do believe that. Is Jesus the Lord, though? This was the problem then. People were denying that Jesus is Lord. Not that the Lord doesn't exist, but was Jesus the yes, Lord? Jesus is God. Jesus, the creator of all things, supreme over all things, sovereign over all things. Yeah, the problem isn't the position of the Lord. It's, it's the position of is Jesus the Lord? And those that I believe are of the Spirit can honestly say that Jesus is Lord. God's given that to you just like he did Peter or anyone else. And he does it with his foreknowledge. I believe that wholeheartedly. Yeah, he has it. He doesn't learn it, right? 
he has all knowledge. Like to say God has foreknowledge, like he he does foreknow. His knowledge is like super knowledge. It, it's know. almost like sometimes what they're they're inducing to me, like, like what I'm trying to understand, Kelly, the best I can, is like they're saying they're saying, Oh, you're questioning uh, you believe Jesus is the son of God, but you don't claim him as your Lord. No. I think what's in question is the fact the man Jesus Christ that came, people did not believe that he is the Son of God, which means that he is Lord. They did not believe that he was that. He, they, they weren't saying that there wasn't such a thing as the Lord or the Son of God. They just weren't believing that Jesus was. And for some reason, that's never taken into consideration. The emphasis is always on putting you back under that, that harness that if you don't live up to a certain degree, you were never saved or whatever, you know? Um, yeah, I, I just well, have an issue with that because I think they take it out of context. There's a pragmatism to everything that they're saying that works and it's true, but it's not the same as the theological position. Yeah, the context is that there was people that were denying that the man Jesus Christ was the son of God, not that they were denying that there was a son of God. They just didn't believe that Jesus was. Yeah. Again, the main thing is just that the day, the, 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 I, I, I don't see how the, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That's what logical work is if you use that and they say by the same way, we can't have any way to know who isn't truly saved. Um, if they, if, you know, that nobody can be a false teacher. It's almost the same thing practically as, uh, the extreme free grace it almost completes the circle because then anybody can just really act like they're making Jesus their Lord to somebody right Yeah. And so you can really play the part but inwardly they hate it all well I'll tell you this he's Lord of your yeah. salvation I and, and, all that stuff. and if you're his he's Lord over you whether you obeyed him or not he's still your Lord if you look at his chasing and his training up and how he deals with us as children, uh, you have to understand that we, we are under his lordship, whether we get things right or wrong. Well, yeah, there, I, I do think there are people who can know that Jesus is God, but yet not make, not believe, not make him their Lord. You know? Yeah. I, I agree with that. And that means that they're not, that they deny, like yeah. they, they, they must be, they must be into something else. They must hate him for the sake of something else. What if uh, when Jesus was saying... Uh, but even then, it's like they still need... They must not understand the gospel. I'm convinced that the only reason people reject the gospel is because they don't actually understand it. <laughs> what if really what Jesus was what, saying when he said... People, everybody I've ever talked to about it, they, don't, then they didn't believe because I still don't explain it properly other than just the, the simple faith. And I'm desimplifying it somehow. Yeah, but I believe that, that the context when Jesus was saying this is, why do you call me Lord, but you don't do what I say? What he, what, you know, that's what I wanted to get into Kevin with. What was he teaching him? It wasn't about whether or not you got everything right or wrong. It, it was about whether or not you believe that Jesus, the man Jesus, was the son of God. That's what he was teaching you to believe in him. That's the will of God. That was the works of God, that you believe in him. So what if it... You know, we've taken these things from a persuasion of this lordship salvation. It's always going to be the same thing that it's persuaded in rather than actually what's being contextual here is that there was people that didn't believe the man Jesus Christ was the son of God. And then when he asked Peter, he said, who do you who do you say I am? He said, you're the son of the living God. He said, you couldn't have known that unless God revealed that to you. Because yep. some were saying he's a prophet, some were saying this, you know. The depths of the abysses and the ends of the earth are in his hand, and there is no place of his rest. For the heavens are his work, and the earth is his creation, and the sea is his handiwork. Man is his formation and his image. Sun, moon, and stars are his elements made for signs and seasons and days and years that they may serve and be slaves to man 
and all things God has made out of things that were not into things that are, in order that through his works his greatness may be known and understood. For as the soul in man is not seen, being invisible to men, but is perceived through the motion of the body, so God cannot indeed be seen by human eyes, but is beheld and perceived through his providence and works. For in like manner as any person, when he sees a ship on sea rigged and in sail, making for the harbor, will no doubt infer that there is a pilot in her who is steering her. So we must perceive that God is the governor or pilot of the whole universe, though he be not visible to the eyes of the flesh, since he is incomprehensible. For if a man cannot look upon the sun, though it be a very small heavenly body on account of its exceeding heat and power, how shall not a mortal man be much more able to face the glory of God, which is unutterable? For as the pomegranate with the rind containing it has within it many cells and compartments which are separated by tissues and has also many seeds dwelling in it. So the whole creation is contained by the spirit of God and the containing spirit is along with the creation contained by the hand of God. As therefore the seed of the pomegranate dwelling inside cannot see what is outside the rind itself being within. So neither can man who along with the whole creation is enclosed by the hand of God behold God. Then again, an earthly king is believed to exist, even though he be not seen by all, for he is recognized by his laws and ordinances and authorities and forces and statutes. And are you unwilling that God should be recognized by his works and mighty? So that the, the notion, did you see the notion there of God being or if, if a king, an earthly king, like people don't know, if people don't know him directly because the kingdom is so large, they recognize him and know them and acknowledge him um, as king through the, by laws and ordinances. Yeah, by his works and mighty deep, like which Christ, you know, is said he was known by the Spirit. His divinity was known by his Spirit. Um, yeah. And he did many works and mighty deeds. Ordinances, laws, everything. He set it all out. Well, again, like most of the majority of the people in ancient times, you know, who were actually under laws. Yeah. That law was the only relationship they had with their king. Mm. And I could say, well, what kind of relationship is that? But that's the difference between one kind of relationship and a personal relationship. What if the law you were given was to have faith in the king and bear one another's burdens? How would you look at that? Have a faith that works through love. I mean, that seems to be what God's will is. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, is that enough? Well, it doesn't. Uh, a lot of atheists will say, well, why didn't, you know, with, instead of like all the Ten Commandments and the laws of Moses, why didn't God just come along and say, hey, don't don't ever keep don't ever have slaves. Don't ever fight each other. Don't ever beat a woman. Don't ever you know, do violent, like whatever kind of thing you can think of. Mm. Like, why didn't God just say, hey, just just behave yourself, okay? Just settle down, just be, because with that argument, that takes us back to the garden. Why, then why didn't you just, you know, well, he did say, he said, don't eat this fruit. So mm. we're already there, you know. See, I think the law would say, don't do this, and the spirit would say, how can you do this? We're already past that, rather. Yeah. How can you do this? Don't you know who you are? You're a child of the king. You know, you're. It'd be so yeah. good. It's, it's so declared. good to know that, you know, because of what Christ has done. The heavens declare his glory. Yeah. Deeds. Consider, O oh man, his works, the timely rotation of the seasons and the changes of temperature and the regular march of the stars, the well-ordered course of days and nights and months and years, 
the various beauty of seeds and plants and fruits, and the diverse species of quadrupeds and birds and reptiles and fishes, both of the rivers and of the sea, or consider the instinct implanted in each of these animals to beget and rear offspring, not for their own profit, but for the use of man, and the providence with which God provides nourishment for all flesh, or the subjection in which he has ordained that all things subserve mankind. Consider, too, the flowing of sweet fountains and never-failing rivers, and the seasonable supply of dews and showers and rains, and the manifold movement of the heavenly bodies and morning star rising and heralding the approach of the perfect luminary and constellation of Pleiades and Orion and Arcturus, in the orbit of the other stars that circle through the heavens, all of which the manifold wisdom of God called by his names of their own. He is God alone who made light out of darkness and brought forth light from his treasures, formed the chambers of the south wind and the treasure houses of the deep and the bounds of the seas and the treasuries of snows and hailstorms, collecting the waters and the storehouses of the deep and the darkness of his treasuries and bringing forth the sweet and desirable and pleasant light out of his treasuries, who causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth and maketh lightnings for rain, who sends forth thunder to terrify and foretells by the lightning the peal of the thunder that no soul may faint with a sudden shock, and who so moderates the violence of the lightning as it flashes out of heaven that it does not consume the earth. For if the lightning were allowed all its power, it would burn up the earth, and were the thunder allowed all its power, it would overthrow all the works that are therein. I really like how he thinks. God, the Lord of all, who alone stretched out the heaven and established the breadth of the earth under it, who stirs the deep recesses of the sea and makes its waves roar, who rules its power and stills the tumult of its waves, who founded the earth upon the waters and gave a spirit to nourish it, whose breath giveth light to the whole, who, if he withdraw his breath, the whole will utterly fail. By him you speak, O man, his breath you breathe, yet him you know not. And this is your condition because of the blindness of your soul and the hardness of your heart. But if you will, you may be healed and trust yourself to the physician and he will couch the eyes of your soul and of your heart. Who is the physician? God who heals and makes alive through his word and wisdom. God by his own word and wisdom made all things for by his word were the heavens made and of all the host of them by the breath of his mouth, the most excellent is his wisdom by his wisdom god founded the earth and by knowledge he prepared the heavens and by understanding were the foundations of the great deep broken up and the clouds poured out their dews if thou perceivest these things old man living chastely and holily and righteously thou canst see god but before all let faith and the fear of god have rule in thy heart and then shalt thou understand these things. When thou shalt have put off the mortal and put on incorruption, then shalt thou see God worthily. For God will raise thy flesh immortal with thy soul. And then, having become immortal, thou shalt see the immortal. And now you believe on him, and then you shall know that you have spoken unjustly against him. But you do not believe that the dead are raised. When the resurrection shall take place, then you will believe, whether you will or no, and your faith shall be reckoned for unbelief, unless you believe <laughs> now. And why do you not believe? Do you not know that faith is the leading principle in all matters? Or what husbandman can reap unless he first trusts his seeds to the earth? Or who can cross the sea unless he first entrusts himself to the pilot? And what sick person can be healed unless first he trusts himself to the care of the physician? And what art or knowledge can anyone learn unless he first apply and entrust himself to the teacher? If then the husband who entrusts the earth, and the sailor the boat, and the sick the physician, will you not place confidence in God, even when you hold so many pledges at his hand? For first he created you out of nothing, and brought you into existence. For if your father was not, nor your mother, much more were you yourself at one time not in being, and formed you out of a small and moist substance, even out of the least drop which at one time had itself no being, and God introduced you into this life. Moreover, you believe that the images made by men are gods and do great things, and can you not believe that the God who made you is able also to make you afterwards? And indeed, the names of those whom you say you worship are the names of dead men. And these two, who and what kind of men were they? 
Is not Saturn found to be a cannibal, destroying and devouring his own children? And if you name his son <laughs> Jupiter, here are also his deeds and conduct for how he was suckled first by a goat on Mount Ida, and having slain it according to the myths and flayed it, he made himself a coat of the hide. And his other deeds, his incest and adultery and lust, will be better recounted by Homer and the rest of the poets. Why should I further speak of his sons, how Hercules burnt himself, about the drunk and raging Bacchus, and of Apollo fearing and fleeing from Achilles and falling in love with Daphne and being unaware of the fate of Hyacinthus, and of Venus wounded, and of Mars, the pest of mortals, and of the ichor flowing from the so-called gods? And these indeed are the milder kinds of legends, since the god who is called Osiris is found to have been torn limb from limb, whose mysteries are celebrated annually, as if he had perished and were being found and sought for limb by limb. For neither is it known whether he perished, nor is it shown whether he is found. And why should I speak of Attis mutilated, or of Adonis wandering in the wood and wounded by a boar while hunting, or Asclepius struck by a thunderbolt, or of the fugitive Serapis chased from Sinope to Alexandria, or of the Scythian Diana herself, too, a fugitive and a homicide, and a huntress and a passionate lover of Endymion? Now, it is not we who publish these things, but your own writers and poets. Why should I further recount the multitudes of animals worshipped by the Egyptians, both reptiles and cattle, and wild beasts and birds and river fishes, and even wash pots and disgraceful noises? But if you cite the Greeks and the other nations, they worship <laughs> stones and wood and other kinds of material substances. So, there was a, apparently, the, I don't know, the, Many people think it was just a rumor started, but that the Egyptians worshipped uh, like certain noises of bodily functions. But but if you look into the scholarship of it, I think many people think that this was something that that this literally was something that was made up back then. But um, that's what he's referring to, worshiping wash pots. And did you hear him earlier when he was talking about? Faith being the primary of all things. Um, is that literally what he said? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Faith being, uh, yeah, the. Uh, don't you know that faith is the yeah the, the yeah the primary because yeah then he went on the list how every single thing that that people do in life um, has faith under underneath of it yeah. Mm -hmm. that's the only point i'm trying to get across you know what is, what, what is your faith in is what i'm going to ask you what is your faith in what's your fruit who is your faith in rather yeah precisely yeah as i said why don't you put you know you'll put your faith in the bed that you sit on the food that you, whoever cooks your food, like all like faith is a is a is a primary principle of all life and existence. Yet yeah, you don't have faith in God. Yeah, you went on and on saying, you know, who did this, who did that, how's this, how's that, talking about creation, and then yeah, you get there's a lot of people that I, I don't know if they have it settled that God exists. You know that God is God. It's impossible to please them without believing that. Are still trying to reach up and 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 create him in their own image. You know, or seeking something that that looks like themselves. Yep. But hey, I'm gonna get off here and get some sleep because they're coming early. I got a text; they're coming early, so earlier than yesterday, possibly. So I've got a. I got to get a few hours of sleep, man. I'm very tired. But I'm going to let you... Could, uh, I'm just going to bog out. And you do what you I, do, brother. I think a uh, book... Three... That's uh, 22 minutes. So we're 14 minutes. If you want to give it like... Yeah, I can go... I, I can go about 14 minutes. Yeah, I can do that. Because that's a uh, book... Going in the book two, and book two is a really long one. Yeah, I can do we, that. We continue it later. We can have those book two. Yeah. Is 
the images that we have just been saying of dead men. For Phidias is found in Pisa, making for the Eleans the Olympian Jupiter, and at Athens the Minerva of the Acropolis. And I will inquire of you, my friend, how many Jupiters exist? For there is firstly Jupiter, surnamed Olympian, then Jupiter Latiaris, and Jupiter Cassius, and Jupiter Tonins, and Jupiter Propetur, and Jupiter Panicius, and Jupiter Poliochus, and Jupiter Capitolinus, and that Jupiter, the son of Saturn, who was king of the Cretans, has a tomb in Crete, but the rest possibly were not thought worthy of tombs. And if you speak of the mother of those who are called gods, far be it for me to utter with my lips her deeds, or the deeds of those by whom she is worshipped, for it is unlawful for us so much as to name such things. And what vast taxes and revenues she and her sons furnish to the king. For these are not gods, but idols, as we have already said, and the works of men's hands and unclean demons. And such may all those become who make them and put their trust in them. Wherefore, I will rather honor the king than your gods, not indeed worshiping him, but praying for him. But God, the living and true God, I worship, knowing that the king is made by him. You will say to me then, why do you not worship the king? because he is not made to be worshipped, but to be reverenced with lawful honor. For he is not a god, but a man appointed by God, not to be worshipped, but to judge justly. For in a kind of way his government is committed to him by God, as he will not have those called kings whom he has appointed under himself, for king is his title, and it is not lawful for another to use it, for neither is it lawful for any to be worshipped but God only. Wherefore, O man, you are wholly in error, Accordingly, honor the king, be subject to him, and pray for him with loyal mind. For if you do this, you do the will of God. For the law that is of God says, My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and be not disobedient to them, for suddenly they shall take vengeance on their enemies. And about your laughing at me and calling me Christian, you know not what you are saying. First, because that which is anointed is sweet and serviceable and far from contemptible. For what ship can be serviceable and seaworthy unless it is first caulked or anointed? Or what castle or house is beautiful and serviceable when it has not been anointed? And what man, when he enters into this life or into the gymnasium, is not anointed with oil? And what work has either ornament or beauty unless it be anointed or burnished? Then the air and all that is under heaven is in a certain sort anointed by light and spirit. And are you unwilling to be anointed with the oil of God? Wherefore, we are called Christians on this account, because we are anointed with the oil of God. Then, as to your denying that the dead are raised, for you say, Show me even one who has been raised from the dead, that seeing I may believe. First, what great thing is it that you believe when you have seen the thing done? Then again, you believe that Hercules, who burned himself, lives, and that Asclepius, who was struck with lightning, was raised. And do you disbelieve the things that are told to you by God? But suppose I should show you a dead man raised and alive. Even this you would disbelieve. God indeed exhibits to you many proofs that you may believe him. For consider, if you please, the dying of seasons and days and nights, and how these also die and rise again. And what? There not a resurrection going on on the seeds and fruits, and this too for the use of men. A seed of wheat, for example, or of the other grains, when it is cast into the earth, first dies and rots away, and then is raised and becomes a stalk of corn. And the nature of trees and fruit trees, is it not that according to the appointment of God, they produce their fruits and their seasons out of what has been unseen and invisible? Moreover, Sometimes also a sparrow or some other birds, when in drinking, it has swallowed a seed of apple. That was interesting. Something else. It's come to some rocky hillock or tomb and has left the seed in its droppings, and the seed which was once swallowed. What's that? I was just going to say that was very interesting how God appointed a time for things to be revealed. Uh, the seed was planted, but he's the one that's cultivating it and pointing the time. Yep. Amen. You gotta trust him, right? He wants you to trust him. It's like it's certain that he could have created the world in six snaps of his fingers instead of six days, right? I've, I've seen people literally just beat themselves down in such a way trying to achieve something that God will accept. And 
I don't know, Kelby. I've come into the understanding. I could be wrong, but uh, I, I wholeheartedly believe this: that when I committed to what Christ has done, like when I committed that, that is enough. That's when things really started changing in my life. You know, I mean, drastically. And how I deal with people and and how I easily offended I was getting different things where I just had to remove myself. You know, to be able to see Christ. And I mean, literally remove myself on both sides of the fence. There, one denying yourself you know, towards other people and the other denying yourself when it concerns what God's doing in you and trusting him that he's doing it in you and you can trust that. You know? Yes. Trust. An allowance. It is. It's a, it, there's just, there's something spiritual though that happens. It's, this is why it did. This is why the, 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 the false view of free grace in which it's a, a mere mental ascent um, as opposed to there is a mental ascent. Yeah, but that's also an indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I think there will be fruit in what God does in your life. When, when do I decide that, you know, somebody's achieved that or if they're saved or not and all that that's where i just i think the bible teaches against doing that yeah i mean ultimately the saved the saved are the fruit they are the fruit and our love is the fruit as well which is our salvation like it's all all that is the same spirit yeah i don't think i have to be concerned with pointing that out i think i need to be more concerned with just planting and watering you know planting and watering that's what we do followed his path through so great a heat now striking root a tree has grown up and of all these things does the wisdom of god affect in order to manifest even by these things that god is able to affect the general resurrection of all men and if you would witness a more wonderful sight which may prove a resurrection not only of earthly but of heavenly bodies consider the resurrection of the moon which occurs monthly how it wanes and dies and rises again hear further O oh man of the work of resurrection going on in yourself even though you were unaware of it. For perhaps you have sometimes fallen sick and lost flesh and strength and beauty. But when you received again from God's mercy and healing and you picked up again in flesh and appearance and recovered also your strength, and as you do not know where your flesh went away and disappeared to, so neither do you know whence it grew or whence it came again. But you will say, from meats and drink changed into blood. Quite so, but this too is the work of God who thus operates and not of any other. Therefore, do not be skeptical, but believe, for I myself also used to disbelieve that this would take place. But now, having taken those things into consideration, I believe. At the same time, I met with the sacred scriptures of the holy prophets, who also, by the Spirit of God, foretold the things that have already happened, just as they came to pass, and the things that are now occurring as they are now happening, and the things future in the order in which they shall be accomplished, Admitting, therefore, the proof which events happening as predicted afford, I do not disbelieve. I believe, obedient to God, whom, if you please, do you also submit to believing him, lest if you now continue unbelieving, you will be convinced hereafter when you are tormented with eternal punishments, which punishments, when they have been foretold by prophets, the later-born poets, philosophers stole from the holy scriptures to make their doctrines worthy of credit. Yet these also have spoken beforehand of the punishments that are to light upon the profane and unbelieving in order that none will be left without witness or be able to say, we have not heard, neither have we known. But do you also, if you please, give reverential attention to the prophetic scriptures and they will make your way plainer for escaping the eternal punishments and obtaining the eternal prizes of God. For he who gave the mouth for speech and formed the ear to hear and made the eye to see will examine all things and will judge righteous judgment rendering merited awards to each. To those who, by patient continuance and well-doing, seek immortality, he will give life everlasting, joy, peace, rest, and abundance of good things, which neither eye hath seen nor ear hath heard, nor hath it entered into the heart of man to conceive. But to the unbelieving and despisers, who obey not the truth, but are obedient to unrighteousness, when they shall have been filled with adulteries and fornications and filthiness and covetousness and unlawful idolatries, sh there shall be anger and wrath, tribulation and anguish, 
and at the last everlasting fire shall possess such men. Since you said, show me thy God, this is my God, and I counsel you to fear him and to trust him. Book two. Yeah. Patient continuance and well-doing is is not denying the truth. It's putting your faith and trust in Christ. And I don't believe you can be happy in Jesus unless you trust and obey. Uh, you're not going to have a good time. Well, it's... <clears throat> yeah, it, it, the uh, obedience to unrighteousness, you know, like he's... The, is a thing <laughs> yeah it's not believing the truth though i mean in, in that context of romans 2 he's talking to the jews right and he's talking about how they judge and that they're condemning them their own selves because they're looking through the law that's the obedience to unrighteousness uh obedience to christ is to trust him i mean well sometimes when i'm saying trust and obey it's it, it, it's literally saying obey to trust him. Um, and the, the obedience will follow. When you trust someone, you you confide in them. You, you listen. You do what they say. You know. But we got to have a maturity in that relationship with Christ and build that up. Amen. And that's what it is, the spirit of trust. If trust is trust, empty trust, people can trust in very different things. People can trust in incorrect things. But trusting in Christ is trusting in love. Amen. Trusting in his spirit. And that he won't fail you, even though you might fail yourself. He will not fail you. That's yeah. the kind of trust he wants. When you the, trust that, man, it changes a lot of things. I'll tell you that. Oh, thank you. The resurrection, the truth, the hope, the gospel, all of it. There's some things that I don't think people can speak in Scripture because it's known when you do what Scripture tells you to do. Um, and that's the inner working of Christ, what he's doing in you when you do this. You know, um, how, how do you make that palatable for everybody to say, because it might not be the same way where everybody in, and how they seen the increase or whatever they were dealing with or whatever. A lot of different scenarios, different situations. But at the same time, the same the same thing that we can resonate is that we trusted in the Lord, you know, to deliver us from these things, to, uh, you know, pull up these strongholds and all that. And I found out the main stronghold was that I wasn't fully trusted in the Lord. You know, and when I when I converted to that and just said, no matter what, man. All kinds of things started changing me, how I seen things, how I looked at scripture. And, and it still is. Again, Jesus said, all scripture points to me, but you don't come to me. I believe, I believe he's saying you don't trust me. I trust him, Kelby. I trust him wholeheartedly. I'm very great. Last thing I want to do, I promise you this, now that I'm coming to this, is go against him. What a friend we have in Jesus. All right, man. Well, I appreciate it. All right, brother. Thanks yeah, for having me on. And yeah, let's do part two. I want to read it. Man, I really like the way this guy says things. He's, uh, I love how they speak back then, and they're so thorough. Imagine him coming against an atheist when he was listing off all those things. Well, how is this? And who, how did this get here? Why is this happening? And why, you know. Just rattling them off one after another. Yeah, I, I've used that argument now. I was like, oh, kind of like, who would have ever thought that you came from, you know, the smallest moist drop, you know, and yet a whole human man came out of that. 
Mm-hmm. You need faith to believe that if you didn't actually know it was the, the truth. You know, you trust it. You never see, you know, you see it happen. Hey, we need to clip that part somewhere in there where he's just going off on, you know, the things that we see in creation and how, how did it come to be and all this. And that he named, that's another thing I wanted to mention to you earlier. I was just going to wait. That he named the stars, stars, you know. Remember we were talking about that the other day? Did Adam, what all did Adam name and what did God actually tell him what it was, you know? And what did he name? Well, did Adam name the stars or did, uh, or God knows all their names at least? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know that man knows what God knows, but yeah. But he did name them. I think there's a couple of verses that talk about how he named the stars. Well, there are many who believe that the angels are, are living beings. If he knows the amount of hairs on our head, he knows anything else in his creation. He knows what it is and what it should be called. But anyway, thanks for having me, Brother Calvi. And I'm hoping that my water is all good tomorrow. I can get back on track, man. I got some catch-up to do on sleep, too. All right, man. I hope everything works out. Yep. Hey, God bless you, brother. All right, man. God bless you. All right, you have a good one. Good night. Good night.